Chapter 141 Another Beast Transformation Translator Born to be Long Chen had just been sneaking away when that voice made him stop stiffly. That voice was very clear and melodious. Slowly turning back, he saw that Tang Wan'er had noticed him at some point. While fighting, she had shouted out his name. Damn Long Chen, are you trying to run right before battle? Tang Wan'er's voice was full of anger. Obviously, she despised the way Long Chen was acting. Her despise wasn't anything to care about. But more importantly, now everyone's focus had landed on him. Hey, what kind of joke is that? Am I, Long Chen, a person who would do such a thing? I was just thinking of finding a good place to warm up before joining the battle in my peak condition, retorted Long Chen. That sophistry was met with complete disdain in everyone's ears. His furtive figure had clearly been about to flee. Even a blind person could probably have seen that. Xiao Wu, go capture that brat. I've long since found him to be displeasing. Give him a thorough beating. Lai Kian Chang ordered one of his subordinates. Yes, boss. That Xiao Wu nodded. With a smile delighting in Long Chen's misfortune, he charged over at him. Xiao Wu was at the peak of blood condensation with powerful combat abilities. He was one of Lai Kian Chang's most capable subordinates. The entire power level of his side sharply dropped because he left the battle, alleviating much of the pressure on Tang Wan'er's side. A crafty light shined within Tang Wan'er's eyes when she saw Xiao Wu go after Long Chen. You might want to warm up, but this sister won't let you do as you please. With a light shout, Tang Wan'er waved her hands, summoning two clear wind blades. They were like two long swords in her hands as she attacked Lai Kai and Shang. She possessed an extremely rare wind spirit body and had a great innate affinity toward wind energy. Her control over wind energy had definitely reached a pinnacle. That was similar to how a pill cultivator controlled the flame. Her wind blades were the same as the flame weapons condensed by pill cultivators. They were formed from the compression of their body's spiritual energy and were extremely terrifying. Other than the wind blades in her hands, there were still countless thinner wind blades swirling around her body. Although they weren't as powerful as the ones in her hand, those wind blades could be controlled with her thoughts. They would shoot out whenever she wanted, causing people to be unable to defend. Only now did Tang Wan'er release some of her true strength. Before she had just been probing him. This was the true fight. She must obtain the Nine Leaf Orchid. Boom. Lai Kai and Chang's pressure exploded out. The thunder force around his body increased as it collided with Tang Wan'er's wind blades. Lai Kai and Chang's body was completely covered by thunderbolts. His body was as hard as iron. And against those wind blades which were more terrifying than sharp swords. He used his fist to resist them. Releasing continuous booms. He was not the slightest bit inferior, but the more intense the fight, the more excited Lai Kian Chang became. Tang Wan'er's strength had exceeded his expectations. If he could conquer such a woman, that would definitely be the greatest accomplishment of his lifetime. His body was incomparably powerful. If he could obtain the Nine Leaf Orchid, he would power up to a whole new level. And so he also definitely refused to give up. As Lai Kian Chang and Tang Wan'er's fighting reached its peak, Xiao Wu had already reached Long Chen. He sinisterly laughed. Brat, now that you have no third rank magical beast, I want to see whether you can still be so insolent. Long Chen's expression became a bit strange. It seemed everyone had already assumed that all of his strength had disappeared along with Little Snow. Did he really look so modest? If you are sensible, then you will immediately kneel and beg for mercy. Xiao Wu stopped a dozen meters from Long Chen with his arms behind his back. Long Chen shook his head at him. I really want to know. Will you spoil disciples die if you don't show off an act of strength? Why don't you look at your own turtle shells and see if they're hard enough? Frankly speaking, you guys are just a bunch of bumpkins who have yet to see the world. Long Chen was truly disgusted with these disciples from powerful families who acted so arrogantly and aloof. It was irritating to see them constantly holding their nose in the air, looking at him with their chin. Xiao Wu had been so respectful in front of Lai Kai and Shang, but now in front of Long Chen. He had become an aloof and arrogant lord. It was truly sickening. Your mouth is really disagreeable. Perhaps I'll beat your mouth first. Xiao Wu's expression sunk, and he coldly shouted, stamping his foot. He had already disappeared, leaving behind only an afterimage as he charged at Long Chen. He sent a slap directly at Long Chen's cheek. As you wish. Long Chen didn't even think about it and also sent out a palm. Long Chen's palm landed on Xiao Wu's palm, causing an intense explosion. Key waves frantically surged out. Xiao Wu had never imagined that Long Chen's palm would contain such shocking strength. He felt as if his palm had collided with some huge mountains. His hand almost broke. 
he was knocked back and his hand was unbearably sore, his heart trembling. Xiao Wu was also a genius who rarely had anyone that could fight with him on the same level. He was extremely arrogant, and other than Lai Kai and Shang, he had never admired anyone else. And his powerful combat strength had been noticed by Lai Kai and Shang and he had become his right-hand man. But he had immediately lost out after just one exchange with Long Chen. How could he not be shocked? It should be my turn now, right? Long Chen had already arrived right in front of the shocked Xiao Wu, sending out a palm. He directly sent out a slap on his cheek. The exact same move as before. You're asking for death. Xiao Wu roared. Long Chen was planning on giving him a public slap in the face. That was the first time anyone had ever treated him like this. His fury immediately soared. Blood key exploded. And key waves surged out. Shouting loudly. He smashed his palm at Long Chen. Boom. This time. The collision was even greater than last time. Even those people fighting below were disturbed. After the collision. They saw one person miserably being knocked back. With a shocked cry, people realized that that person was Xiao Wu. Other than Tang Wan Er, everyone present had thought that Long Chen would be ruthlessly oppressed. But surprisingly, the result was that Xiao Wu was sent flying. Xiao Wu was able to fight alone against three members of Tang Wan Er's faction. His strength was obvious to anyone. Of course, Xiao Wu was also extremely shocked. To him, it felt like Long Chen was a huge mountain. And no matter how he tried, he was still completely minute in front of him. Suddenly, he felt a sharp pain over his face, and he was sent flying back once more. A clear ringing echoed throughout the battlefield. Along with Xiao Wu, a couple of teeth that were still stained with blood flew through the air. Everyone watched that figure in horror. Long Chen truly appeared like a war god, his incredible imposingness making him a completely different person than his previous mischievously smiling self. Even Lai Kai and Chang and Tang Wan Er were given a fright. Xiao Wu's strength was something they had a clear understanding of. Tang Wan Er had always suspected that Long Chen was an expert and should have been able to handle Xiao Wu, allowing her to focus against Lai Kai and Shang. But she had never imagined that he would defeat Chiring him so quickly. In front of Long Chen, Xiao Wu was almost unable to withstand a single blow. Furthermore, she could tell that Long Chen hadn't used the slightest bit of spiritual key. He had only used the power of his physical body. In other words, he hadn't even used any of his real abilities. Although Xiao Wu was nothing in her eyes, to be able to defeat Chiring him so easily meant that Long Chen was a true expert. At the same time as she was shocked, she also found it funny. Originally, she had only tricked Long Chen into joining her faction in order to punish him for being so rude to her. She really hadn't expected for her to have accidentally grabbed a powerful expert to her side. No wonder Ye's Hikyu had gone to try to pull Long Chen in. It seemed it was Ye's Hikyu who had realized Long Chen's strength the earliest. Thinking about it, she was also shocked at how perceptive Ye's Hikyu's vision was. The entire battlefield had slowed down because of Long Chen. Although they were still fighting, the majority of their focus had now shifted to him. Bastard, I'll kill you. Xiao Wu was in disbelief as he held his cheek. Feeling his empty teeth sockets, he let out a hysterical howl. He was a proud genius, one who his family had doted on greatly. When had he ever received such humiliation? His fury soared as he sinisterly and bitterly glared at Long Chen. Idiot, are you the only one allowed to beat others while others can't beat you? Is that the stupid logic of disciples from the powerful families? Sneered Long Chen. Xiao Wu angrily roared and suddenly, his clothes exploded, leaving behind only his trousers. Black scales covered his bare flesh. Even his face was being covered with scales appearing extremely frightening. As the scales covered his body, his aura became increasingly terrifying. Beast transformation. Someone shouted out in shock. This was clearly a kind of battle skill. By refining a magical beast's essence blood, it was possible to release a portion of a magical beast's strength. Long Chen was also somewhat surprised. This was the second time he encountered beast transformation. The first time being against Wang Chen at the Phoenix Cry Lantern Festival. But Xiao Wu had an even greater ability than Wang Chang. Even his head was being covered with scales, and his pressuring aura was much stronger. Bastard, I'll kill you. Xiao Wu roared and stamped on the ground. Just that one stamp created a large hole in the ground. He shot forward like a cannonball. His scale-covered fist was like a large hammer as it smashed at Long Chen. Before his fist even arrived, the air had become unable to endure such pressure and was beginning to whistle. Space trembling. What a terrifying punch. Some people cried out. No wonder Xiao Wu had become like Kai Chang's right hand. This kind of strength was too frightening. 
Tang Wan'er was frightened and icily said, When Zhao Wu undergoes beast transformation, even his reasoning will become chaotic and explosive. Are you not afraid of him accidentally taking someone's life? If someone killed another person during this trial, they would be expelled from the monastery. This was to preserve everyone's safety, preventing their disciples from massacring each other. Lai Kian Chang merely sneered. What do your people's life and death have to do with me? Within the monastery, just I, Lai Kian Chang, can be the main character. You other minor characters aren't necessary. Tang Wan'er icily shouted in reply, and a wind blade sliced out, forcing Lai Kian Chang to retreat. She was just about to rush over to Long Chen. You should take care of yourself. Lai Kian Chang coldly snorted and Thunder Force suddenly appeared below his feet. He shot over and blocked Tang Wan'er, cutting off her path. Tang Wan'er forcefully received Lai Kian Chang's attack and was forced back a couple of steps. She raged. Do you not even care about your own subordinates? Who cares about them? Minor characters are only there to serve the main character. This is their fate, said Lai Kian Chang indifferently. Tang Wan'er's beautiful face became icy, slowly folding her hands before her chest. A terrifying energy condensed between her hands. You bastard. I'll show you just who is the minor character. Boom. The energy within Tang Wan'er's hands had just begun to condense when the ground suddenly trembled intensely before she could finish. Key waves exploded out and Tang Wan'er looked into the distance with shock. Chapter 142 I want to see if I can translate her. Born to be an explosion shook heaven and earth. Dust filled the air as key waves surged out angrily. Despite being separated by hundreds of meters, that terrifying energy still made it difficult for others to breath. Tang Wan'er looked over in shock. Stopping what she was doing, Lai Kian Chang also paused to look. What? When the key waves scattered, everyone saw where the two people had been fiercely fighting. Previously they had been at the edge of the valley, near the cliff. People were shocked to see that that part of the cliff had been completely destroyed. As the smoke gradually cleared, it revealed Long Chen, his long hair dancing and his clothes fluttering, looking just like a celestial emperor. Around 30 meters in front of him was Xiao Wu. He was now half kneeling on the ground. Xiao Wu's right arm was broken in several places. In fact, bone was sticking out in some spots. He was drenched in blood. He was blankly staring with disbelief. He seemed to have yet to realize that blood was flowing from his mouth and had covered his body. The entire battlefield was deathly silent now. Xiao Wu had used his strongest techniques and had still been so severely injured. That was something hard to accept for everyone here. If Xiao Wu's opponent had been a monster class opponent like Lai Kian Shang, then they would be able to accept that. But that wasn't the case. Everyone's hearts were nervously beating. There were originally five monster class geniuses. Was this the birth of a sixth? Cough. Xiao Wu suddenly underwent a coughing fit. As he coughed, more and more blood came up, frightening others. Now everyone understood that it wasn't just his arm that was broken. Even his inner organs must have been greatly damaged. They just didn't know whether his life was in danger. Long Chen, you bastard. I'll kill you. Xiao Wu cursed at Long Chen between his coughs of blood. It was impossible for him to accept this result. He had always thought that he was completely unparalleled other than against the five monster class experts he always considered himself the number one person below the monster class. But now he had been defeated by some nameless brat. That caused him to sink into madness. With just your kind of conduct. Even if you cultivated for another 10,000 years, you still wouldn't be able to kill me. All you would do is waste 10,000 years of resources to make 10,000 years of crap. Long Chen shook his head. Xiao Wu's previous attack had been truly powerful. At the moment they had collided, Long Chen had summoned his Feng Fu battle armor, heavily injuring him with a punch. Now Long Chen had seen through more and more secrets of the Feng Fu battle armor. His usage of it had become much more skilled. He had not realized that if he hadn't called out his divine ring, summoning the Feng Fu battle armor wouldn't cause anything strange. Unless people were looking at his eyes, there were no other major changes. And after countless tests, Long Chen had become extremely adept at using it. He could now summon the Feng Fu battle armor only during the moment he attacked, allowing him to release an explosive strength. Once he finished releasing that power, he would immediately put it away. That way he could save on the amount of his Feng Fu star's energy. He would no longer just foolishly keep it summoned the whole time, wasting that precious energy. Furthermore, this way, he could conceal its existence, not drawing other people's attention. While many people had felt that the previous exchange had been a bit strange, they were unable to tell what part of it was strange. Long Chen, 
You have breed son of a BTCH. If you have the gods, then kill me. Xiao Wu seemed to have already lost all reasoning at this time. Realizing he was unable to move his body anymore, he began to wildly curse. Long Chen's expression became icy, and a cold killing intent radiated off him as he walked over to Xiao Wu. Long Chen, don't. If you kill him, you'll be expelled from the monastery. Tang Wan'er couldn't help but warn him when she saw what he was doing. Long Chen seemed to have not heard. Walking right up next to the heavily injured Xiao Wu, his eyes didn't contain the slightest emotion. He was the very embodiment of the Grim Reaper. You've lost, but due to your pathetic ego, you refuse to admit your loss. So you begin to act like a shrew and shout curses at me in order to relieve your own heart's terror and unwillingness. You want to use the monastery's rules to suppress me. If I don't dare to kill you because of the monastery's rules, it'll let you feel like you thwarted me despite losing in body. Of course this is your only option. Although it's a bit disgraceful, this is the only play you have against me right now. But unfortunately, you don't know me. You shouldn't have insulted my family. You shouldn't have touched upon my taboo. Since you did, you will die. Long Chen might be talking to Xiao Wu, but the entire crowd was completely silent. So each of his words rang out clearly in everyone's ears. Long Chen's analysis was completely on point, revealing all of what Xiao Wu had been thinking. Everyone was immediately filled with disdain for Xiao Wu, but they also felt as if something was wrong. If he knew he was intentionally provoking him, why was he still intent on taking the bait? Long Chen, you fool. He's intentionally provoking you. Seeing that Long Chen had clearly seen through it all and was still acting like this, Tang Wan'er cried out in fear and alarm. Although she had previously tricked Long Chen, that was just because of her vengeful nature. Of course, if she was offended, then she had to repay that. It didn't mean she had a bad heart. Now that she saw Long Chen had limitless potential and was so powerful, she naturally couldn't endure watching him jump into a trap and be kicked out of the monastery. That would completely sever his future prospects. Long Chen, your sister Wan'er's follower, so her words are orders. By acting like this, you are being disloyal. Didn't you want to be a good person? King Yu also added in her own persuasions. But when she put it that way, everyone frowned. It didn't seem there was anyone else in the world who tried to persuade people like that. Was there? Haha, <laughs> Long Chen. So what if I curse you? You're just a bastard. A son of a BTCH. If you have the ability, then kill me. I'm waiting for you. If you don't dare kill me, then you're just a 100% son of a BTCH. Haha. <laughs> Ah, Xiao Yu had been crazily laughing when he let out a miserable scream. Long Chen's foot had firmly stamped down on his leg, causing cracking sounds to ring out as it broke. Long Chen had complete understanding of the body's structure. The place he had stepped on was three inches below the knee. There was an acupuncture point there. It was the most concentrated point of nerves of pain. By stepping there, the tip of his toe only had to lightly press slightly to cause his pain to immediately multiply tenfold. A-H-H. Xiao Yu's miserable scream rang out loud and clear, causing everyone to get goosebumps. Seeing him torment the miserable Xiao Wu, everyone felt their hearts turn numb. What I dare and don't dare to do doesn't matter. I just want to see whether you really do possess the unyielding character to face death fearlessly. But unfortunately, it seems a trash person like you doesn't possess that. Long Chen shook his head regretfully. He once more pressed down with his foot, breaking Xiao Wu's other leg in the same way as the other one. Before. Xiao Wu had been repeatedly screaming, but this time, he wasn't even able to scream. Veins bulged on his forehead, his eyes almost popped out, his face turned purple as his scream was choked, his body incessantly trembling. Ah, how strange. Someone like yourself, a hero who can ignore the fear of death must definitely have an unyielding character, but it seems I can't find where that is. I guess it's not on your legs. Perhaps it's in your arms? Or perhaps your back? Please excuse me for being an amateur. Endure it for a bit. I'll find it quickly. Long Chen softly consoled him, his gaze landing on his arm. Long Chen, you son of a BTCH. You won't have a good death. If you have the guts then kill me. Xiao Wu sinisterly cursed. Oh, I'll definitely kill you. But first I want to find that unyielding character of yours. Long Chen shook his head. Crack. Crack. Painful cracking noises continued to ring out from Xiao Wu's body. Everyone felt their scalps turn numb. They were all disciples from powerful families, each of them being a high and aloof existence. When would they have ever seen such a bloody scene? Each of their faces was pale. Most frightening of all was that Long Chen's expression was as calm as water. 
That was even more frightening than if he had appeared sinister or malevolent. Everyone was just watching foolishly. Even Tang Wan'er's face was slightly pale. Although her combat abilities were without compare and she had defeated countless experts, this was the first time she had ever seen such a cruel act. The current Long Chen was definitely like an emotionless death god. He was a completely different person than his previously laughing, mischievous scoundrel self. When his miserable screams finally ended, Long Chen picked up Xiao Wu by the neck as if he were a dead dog. Xiao Wu was raised into the air, his feet no longer touching the ground, but Xiao Wu definitely was strong-willed. Despite undergoing such a painful torture, the hatred on his face had yet to fade. Bastard, torture me as much as you want. Unfortunately, you still won't dare kill me. Ha ha ha, Xiao Wu crazily laughed. Everyone present watching the two of them couldn't help but feel helpless. The both of them were definitely madmen. They couldn't be judged according to common sense. Long Chen indifferently looked at Xiao Wu, and a trace of pity floated into his eyes. Your scheming really is profound. You want to use this kind of method to damage my Dao heart. If my heart is even slightly damaged, it won't be perfect and later when I try to advance, it will be even harder to make breakthroughs. It might even form a heart devil. But unfortunately, your calculations are wrong. In your next life, remember, not all schemes can control others. If you don't have any last words to say, I'll be sending you on your way. When everyone heard those words, they were all extremely confused. Only Lai Kian Chang and Tang Wan'er's expressions changed. The Dao heart was something that other people might not know about. But as for Lai Kian Chang and Tang Wan'er, the experts in their family had warned them about it over and over. They had to keep their Dao heart faultless and perfect. Only then could their cultivation path become longer and longer. The Dao heart was an extremely broad term. It could be said to be one's Dao, and it could also be said to be a mental state. In brief, it was what allowed one's heart to remain bright and clear. It really was just like what Long Chen had said. If Long Chen ended up insulted by Xiao Wu with his words but was unable to do anything to him, that would cause Long Chen's heart to be oppressed with resentment. That would create a knot in his heart. That knot might not look like anything, but it would slow down Long Chen's cultivation and affect his mental state. It would be a great barrier when attempting to make a breakthrough. The higher the cultivation base, the more of an obstacle it would pose. It could even eventually form a heart devil which could cause him to accidentally die when trying to advance realms. It could be said to be a kind of ruthless poison against the heart. Tang Wan'er had been thinking that Long Chen was being too excessive, but now that he explained this, even she began to feel a trace of killing intent. This Xiao Wu was incredibly vile to do this. He, kill me? Do you dare? You'll be expelled from the monastery. Your life will be over. Haha, <laughs> Xiao Wu unbridledly laughed. I want to see if I can. Chapter 143 Blame Yourself Translator Born to be AHHH, Xiao Wu was suddenly engulfed in flames. He miserably screamed out, as with his heavily injured body, it was impossible for him to use spiritual key to protect his body. He could only endure the flames roasting. He madly struggled, but his throat was caught by Long Chen and so he could only remain within the flames. Finally, he began to feel fear. He now realized that the moment he had insulted Long Chen, Long Chen had ceased having any intentions of letting him off. Long Chen had already decided to kill him at that time. It was laughable that he had then continuously provoked Long Chen, saying he didn't dare kill him. Long Chen's words had been entirely correct. The famous and powerful Xiao Wu had been unable to accept being defeated by Long Chen. And so since he couldn't beat him, he had come up with an idea to anger him to death. Thus, he had begun to insult Long Chen thinking that he couldn't do anything to him with the monastery's rules in place. As for whatever that Dao heart was, Long Chen had overestimated him. He still hadn't reached the level where he knew about it. Stop. I admit defaturing. Quickly stop. Xiao Wu cried out in fear. That was because he was horrified to find he was already being burnt black. In just a moment, he really would be burned alive. Long Chen wasn't releasing his full flame strength. He was no saint who would forgive anything. He would never forgive those who insulted his parents. Although his face was calm, his heart was filled with fury. That was especially the case when it came to his mother. She was his reverse scale. If anyone dared to touch her, they would definitely die. And so Long Chen was using his weakest flame to roast Xiao Wu. That was in order to warn everyone not to touch upon his taboos. Long Chen, stop. It's not worth it for you to kill him. King Yu couldn't help but shout out when she saw how grave and icy he was. Long Chen turned to glance at her. Although she was definitely too long-winded and pesky, she truly had a good heart. 
Thank you. But those who insult my mother, no matter who, must die. Long Chen's words were extremely resolute. Long Chen, you fool. Even if you want to kill someone, you have to look at the situation. You're ruining your future. Did you become stupid? Tang Wan'er was infuriated. Martial artists must have an unstoppable determination. No matter what obstacles block their path, they either have to step over them or smash them apart. They cannot avoid them. Otherwise, how could they maintain their resolution? Some obstacles can't be avoided. And if you aren't able to step over them, then you must completely smash them apart and viciously stamp them under your feet. After saying that, Long Chen's flame exploded in strength. No, Long Chen, I'm sorry. I beg you, forgive me. Xiao Wu fearfully begged. He had thought Long Chen wouldn't dare kill him, and that was why he had said such vicious things. But now when he realized he was truly facing death, he was completely terrified. Sorry, you're too late. Suddenly, his flame explosively grew to a height of dozens of meters, its heat causing even space to warp. Then the flames completely faded and the world returned to calm. Long Chen was still in his previous position, but Xiao Wu had disappeared. A breeze blew by, dragging away the last bits of ashes on his hand. A generation's genius had disappeared from the world just like that. He died. People felt as if their hearts were about to stop. Long Chen had really killed Xiao Wu. Wasn't that a provocation against the Zhuanshan Monastery? It's over. Tang Wan'er was incredibly upset. She even wanted to give Long Chen a beating. That scoundrel was usually so cunning. And yet he was such an idiot now. Now that he had broken the monastery's rules. Even she couldn't save him. Tang Wan'er couldn't bear seeing such a genius be expelled just like that. King Yu was just foolishly looking at Long Chen. Even she had nothing to say at this time. Long Chen was completely obstinate. Despite clearly knowing the consequences, he had still done such a thing. Suddenly four figures appeared. Their white robes had the insignia of the Zhuanshan Monastery. The same robes as the senior apprentice brothers who had inspected their registration cards. Long Chen, you've killed a fellow registrant. You are expelled. One of them icily said. The entire crowd was deathly silent. Looking from those four and back to Long Chen, they couldn't say anything. But there was one person who was excited. That would have to be Lai Kai and Shang. He wanted to see whether Long Chen could still stay so unperturbed while being expelled. Senior Apprentice Brothers. Actually Tang Wan'er wanted to go help Long Chen. But that person waved his hand. No need to explain anything. We're just following the monastery's rules. You don't need to waste your breath. Tang Wan'er could only helplessly close her mouth. Her eyes reddened as she looked at Long Chen and she almost teared up. Long Chen. I'm sorry. If it weren't for me. Perhaps it wouldn't have been like this. Tang Wan'er was somewhat choked with emotion. If it weren't for her, Long Chen wouldn't have fought with Xiao Wu, and so this would never have happened. Putting it bluntly, Long Chen had been implicated because of her. In other words, it was her fault he had ruined his life. She felt as if a knife was stabbing her heart. It's not your fault. It's just my luck was bad to run into a madman. Long Chen shook his head, but his words only made Tang Wan'er feel even worse. She wished Long Chen would curse her instead. Perhaps that would make her feel better than this. Shut up. You've broken the monastery's rules. So you've already lost the right to participate in this trial. Hand over your registration card. You can get lost. One of the four with a sword on his hip frowned impatiently. Who do you think you are to tell me to get lost? Snorted Long Chen disdainfully. Long Chen's words immediately caused everyone's jaws to drop. What was Long Chen thinking? Had he really become crazy? To dare contradict these senior apprentice brothers. Did he have a death wish? These senior apprentice brothers were all true tendon transformation experts. Talking like that to them. He must really be tired of living. That person's expression changed and he narrowed his eyes. Slowly placing his hand on his sword hilt. He sinisterly said if you want to die. Then I'll fulfill your wish. I guarantee you'll be dead within three moves. Even a cannon fodder dares speak so arrogantly. If I advanced to the tendon transformation realm I guarantee I could kill you with a single slap. You ended up so frustrated that you're so weak amongst your peers that you came here to show off to the weaker newcomers. Were you looking for a fair ground? Snorted Long Chen. That person angrily raged. You're asking for death. That's enough. Suddenly, the first person who had arrived waved his hand to stop that person. To Long Chen, he said. Although you might be a talent, the monastery's rules cannot be changed by anyone. So please leave. That person truly was regretful. He clearly sympathized with Long Chen so his words were still very polite. Senior Apprentice Brother. Junior wishes to know just what rule I have broken. 
Please tell me so that I can accept it wholeheartedly. Long Chen also returned that politeness back to him. Senior apprentice brother Chang, just make him leave. There's no need to waste your time talking to such a long-winded troublemaker. That man who had been contradicted by Long Chen complained. Did your mom and dad never teach you not to interrupt others while they are speaking? Do you not know that that's rude? Long Chen icily glared at him without the slightest bit of politeness. He really was starting to be irritated with this man constantly targeting him. Those previous senior apprentice brothers had mostly been extremely modest. How did some idiot like him pop up? That person was just about to angrily charge forward when he was pulled back by the other two. Senior apprentice brother Chen said to Long Chen, According to the monastery's rules, within the trial region, the disciples taking the trial cannot maliciously take another one's life, or they will lose the right to participate in the trial. Senior apprentice brother, you really explained it well. Long Chen raised his thumb. Stop bootlicking. Now that you can understand, hurry up and get lost, said that previous person icily. Holy crap. Do you know how to stay quiet? I really am puzzled. Did you just get out of a prison and your balls hurt so much that you have to butt into the conversation like this? After saying that, Long Chen realized that the other senior apprentice brothers all had strange expressions. Wait, did I really get it right? You really just got out of a prison. Long Chen looked at him in disbelief. Bastard. Let go. I'll kill him. That person's expression immediately became ashen and he angrily shouted. You too. Bring junior apprentice brother Wu to patrol a different area. Leave this place to me, ordered senior apprentice brother Chen helplessly. Those two nodded and brought senior apprentice brother Wu away. As he was dragged away by the other two, he glared at Long Chen, mouthing at him to wait for him. For a moment, everyone's expressions were extremely odd. That reverence they had had for their powerful senior apprentice brothers had faded by quite a bit. Junior apprentice brother Wu has a bad temperament and was forced into seclusion by the elders. He only just came out yesterday. Anyways. Back to the topic. Long Chen, you must leave. Hopefully you won't make it hard on me. That won't be good for you. Senior apprentice brother Chang, according to the monastery's rules, you cannot expel me. Long Chen shook his head. Oh, senior apprentice brother Chen was startled. According to the Zhuanchen monastery's trial regulations, third section, line 7, within the trial region, disciples taking the trial cannot maliciously take other people's lives or they will lose the right to participate in the trial. I trust that senior apprentice brother Chen should be very clear about that so I won't say much. Within the section, just what does the word malicious mean here? Can senior apprentice brother Chen explain it to this junior? Asked Long Chen. This, senior apprentice brother Chen paused for a moment. He understood Long Chen's meaning. It was Xiao Wu who had provoked him first, and also maliciously insulted him. Everything had been his own fault. So Long Chen had his own grounds to justify his killing of him and it couldn't count as maliciously killing. You have an argument there, but I can't handle this matter. I'll have to report it to my superiors and have them make a decision. Senior apprentice brother Chen hesitated. This result was something no one had expected. Tang Wan'er's eyes brightened. Seeing Long Chen return to his previous crafty, rascally self, she relaxed inside. It appeared she had underestimated this scoundrel. At the same time, she thought of how she had actually begun to cry because of her guilt. Looking at Long Chen's back, she was both ashamed and angered. She had ended up losing face today. No need to report it. Xiao Wu's motive was wicked and so he has only himself to blame. No one else, including Long Chen, is at fault. The trial may continue. An aged voice rang out from a distant location. Chapter 144 Fanning the Flames Translator Born to be that aged voice caused everyone to blink in surprise. Then a storm of commotion immediately erupted. They're letting Long Chen off just like that. No one could understand that. Although Long Chen might have a somewhat reasonable argument. How could he just be let off just like that? That's not fair. One of Lai Kian Chang's people indignantly spoke out. Obviously, he was disappointed that the monastery hadn't expelled Long Chen. Idiot. Didn't senior apprentice brother Wan already explain that there is no such thing as fairness within the monastery? The majority of the monastery's rules all favor the strong. Did you plug your ears and not hear? Someone immediately retorted from Tang Wan'er's faction. Obviously, that person considered Long Chen as one of them. Previously, they hadn't had enough people present. Furthermore, Lai Kian Chang's side had possessed a powerful expert like Xiao Wu who had suppressed them, causing them to feel some anger inside. But then Long Chen had shown everyone he was a powerful expert in his own right. 
he was immediately treated as one of them. After all, the strong were always popular and welcomed. Although what that person said wasn't polite, it was definitely a fact that the monastery's rules favored the strong. And once everyone thought of that, it immediately resolved that matter. If they wanted to talk about absolute fairness, then Lai Kai and Shang, Tang Wan or, and the others would all have to receive the same treatment as them. That wouldn't be fair to them as monster class geniuses. Yes, disciple understands. Senior apprentice brother Chen respectfully bowed toward a distant mountain peak. He then smiled slightly to Long Chen. Congratulations, you can continue participating in the trial, but next time take care. Wandering on the edge of the rules might be exciting, but one failure will be irrecoverable. This was a warning he gave him in goodwill. Although Long Chen had managed to get out through a technicality, that kind of conduct was extremely dangerous. If he had been judged guilty, he would have lost all his future prospects, and that would definitely not have been worth it. Junior brother will engrave senior apprentice brother Chang's priceless words into my heart. This time junior brother was impulsive. Killing people is after all a low-class method. It's not something a smart person would do. Long Chen's earnest words caused an admiring smile appeared on senior apprentice brother Chang. Only a powerful expert who didn't become arrogant could go further on his path. So next time when I run into such a situation, I definitely won't kill him, but instead make him suffer a life worse than death. That way I can resolve my enmity without touching the monastery's rules. That's what a smart person would do. Long Chen acted as if he had come to a sudden comprehension. Senior apprentice brother Chen stiffened, but he then shook his head. You guys continue your trial. In any case, everything is up to yourselves. After saying that, he disappeared from the valley, leaving behind only the two factions. Now that senior apprentice brother Chen had left, Long Chen turned to look back at everyone who was staring at him. Tang Wan'er's side was clearly much more amicable to him, while Lai Kai and Chang's side was filled with hostility, but within that hostility was also a trace of fear. Lai Kai and Chang was also staring at Long Chen, his eyes filled with a gloomy chill. His battle intent was soaring, and he might charge out to attack him at any moment. TCH, you blue-haired gorilla, can you not stare at me with such worshipful eyes? I, Long Chen, don't like taking in any junior brothers, so give up on that dream. Furthermore, with that appearance of yours that even your grandparents couldn't love, are you really chasing after our beautiful fairy sister Wanner? You really are a horse who doesn't even know his face is long. Do you know how to feel a sense of shame? And have you never heard that animals of the same species should stick together? I've always wondered whether the workers of the monastery are really even taking their work seriously for them to have accepted an ugly gorilla like yourself, insulted Long Chen. Hearing him insult Lai Kai and Chang like this, the entire crowd was alarmed. Just what were Long Chen's guts made out of? He had only just managed to escape from being expelled from the monastery, but he now acted as if nothing had happened and was provoking a monster class existence. Both factions people all looked toward Lai Kai and Shang. His face had turned dark from rage. Lai Kai and Chang's skin had never been pale. So with his darkened expression, everyone suddenly saw that Long Chen's vision truly had been correct. The current Lai Kai and Chang truly did look like a gorilla. Long Chen, don't make trouble. Tang Wan'er was actually already laughing inside, but she still kept herself composed on the outside as she quickly chided Long Chen. She was afraid Lai Kai and Chang's fury would explode out. Although Long Chen had displayed an extremely great strength just now, that didn't mean he could stand shoulder to shoulder with a monster class genius. Sister Wan'er, you don't need to persuade me. I'm just taking your place to feel wronged. Long Chen used his sleeve to cover his face and put on a huge act of trying to hold back his sobs. You are all definitely monster class existences, but four of you are human. So why did they have to add a gorilla amongst you? Isn't that a complete curse against you guys? That's especially the case for you and sisters Hikyu. You are both fairies who have descended amongst us mere mortals. For this fellow to be considered one of you is practically a blasphemy. Sister Wan'er, you are the goddess of our hearts, grand and sacred. We definitely can't allow others tarnish your image. Am I right everyone? As he spoke, his voice became impassioned, filled with righteous indignation. His last, infectious words were shouted to Tang Wan'er's people. The majority of them were men. They had long since formed a sense of admiration for Tang Wan'er, considering her as a heavenly existence. But they had never dared say anything. Long Chen's current words immediately resonated with them. Hearing his words, they all passionately shouted together. Yes. We won't let anyone to tarnish sister's image. Long Chen laughed inside. 
he had to complete his act. With red eyes, he loudly shouted, Sister, look, in us brothers' hearts, you are our goddess, our religion. We won't let anyone blaspheme you. But look, what does this gorilla do? He doesn't have the slightest understanding of what it means to be gentle with a beautiful woman. He actually dares fight against you. Your dirty gorilla claws have already committed a sin against the very heavens. We will never forgive you. Long Chen pointed to Lai Kian Chang's faction. As for you small monkeys following this gorilla to make trouble, your sins also cannot be forgiven. Brothers, what are you still waiting for? Raise your fists and defend our holy goddess. Use your passion to display your sincerity to our goddess. We will heroically drive these monkeys out of our sight. Brothers, charge. By the time he finished speaking, Long Chen had already begun to charge toward Lai Kian Chang's faction. Those people were still in a daze when Long Chen arrived in front of them. A single fist smashed into one dazed youth. When Tang Wan'er's people saw Long Chen's punch, their passions were completely ignited and they charged forward. We pledge our lives to defend Sister Wan'er's purity and defeaturing gorilla. Who knew whether it was because of Long Chen's words or whether they had always possessed such a desire. But as soon as one person shouted out, everyone repeated their battle cry. We pledge our lives to defend Sister Wan'er's purity and defeaturing gorilla. Dozens of blood condensation cultivators shouted together, their voices shaking the heavens. Their cry could be heard hundreds of miles away. The chaotic battle once more started, but this time with Long Chen's addition, Tang Wan'er's side had exploded in power. Although they still had fewer people, they were completely suppressing their opponents. As for Tang Wan'er, she was watching blankly as her people's combat strength skyrocketed. She had no idea what was going on. What goddess? What blasphemy? What were they talking about? Long Chen, you're asking for it. Lai Kian Chang finally couldn't endure it anymore and cursed. Charging at Long Chen, your opponent is me. Tang Wan'er extended her hand, sending out wind blades that completely blocked Lai Kian Chang. Tang Wan'er, this Long Chen is too excessive. Are you sure you want to protect him? Lai Kian Chang's expression was extremely gloomy. Today he had truly been infuriated. Even a more reserved person probably wouldn't have been able to endure Long Chen's words, let alone Lai Kian Chang with his explosive temperament. He's one of my people, so of course I will protect him. Tang Wan'er's words were completely reasonable, but in Lai Kian Chang's ears, they had another meaning. A brutal killing intent exploded from him. Then I'll kill him. Lai Kian Chang ground his teeth as his killing intent surged. Tang Wan'er was startled, not understanding why Lai Kian Chang would suddenly become so tyrannical but she still shook her head, with me present, don't even think of touching him, ahh, Lai Kian Chang felt as if he might explode from his anger, with a roar that shook the land, the thunderbolts around his body became a complete set of armor around him, his terrifying aura exploded, he, the gorilla has changed clothes although Long Chen might appear to be completely focused on the fighting, he actually was just randomly wandering around the crowd, most of his focus was on Lai Kian Chang, Tang Wan'er's expression changed slightly, and she clapped her hands together before her. Her aura surged and her long hair danced. Hundreds of large and small wind blades formed around her body, constantly revolving. They were like hundreds of flower petals dancing in the air, setting off against Tang Wan'er's body to make it look like she had just walked out of a painting. How beautiful. Long Chen couldn't hold back from exclaiming inside. That kind of beauty was something no one else could compare to. This kind of technique was incredibly graceful. More importantly, their fight had now progressed to a new level. The previous wind blades she had summoned were just empty bodies. But these ones she had summoned were practically solid. And it was almost possible to see veins on top the wind blades. To condense formless wind energy into a weapon that was practically solid. And in such numbers, proved just how terrifying Tang Wan'er's wind spirit body was. The two of their auras were continuously climbing becoming more and more terrifying. Space was trembling because of them, even beginning to twist. Atop a distant mountain peak hundreds of miles away was Tu Fang. He sighed. The sect leader truly does have a great vision. This Long Chen truly is unstable. I even suspect that the sect leader intentionally got injured to throw this mess into my lap. Ah, whatever. I'll just let them mess around. Watching them really is vexing. I'll go back and just wait for the final news. Tu Fang shook his head and disappeared from atop a huge tree. The only sign he had even moved was the slight quivering of the tree. Tang Wan'er, let me ask you again. Are you really planning on blocking me? Asked Lai Kian Chang icily. As I said, with me here, you are unable to harm him. Wind blade surged around her body as she replied indifferently. 
then I'll have to offend you. Li Kian Chang roared and light exploded from his body. Stamping on the ground, he charged at Tang Wanur. Chapter 145 Sinister Method Translator Born to be Li Kian Chang's fist shot out. Thunder Force covered his fist as it whistled over to Tang Wanur. Tang Wanur was completely serious as a long sword like wind blade in her hand slashed out. With an explosive bang, Tang Wanur's wind blade directly collapsed from Li Kian Chang's force. But Li Kian Chang's fist only paused for a moment before continuing forward. Tang Wanur's expression didn't change in the slightest when her hand's wind blade collapsed. With a wave of her hand, the wind blades around her surged in front of her, forming a wall of wind blades. Li Kian Chang's fist smashed into the wind blade wall. That wall trembled several times, but it didn't break, blocking his fist. Li Kian Chang was shocked. He was the clearest about how powerful his fist was, having used his thunder force. This fist had never failed to defeat Chiring enemies in the same realm as him. But Tang Wanur's expression was still completely indifferent as if blocking him wasn't taxing at all. He suddenly realized that he had underestimated her. None of the monster class experts could be underestimated. He once more shouted and punched out. As for Tang Wanur, she retreated slightly, floating back several meters gracefully, dodging his fist. At the same time, she formed a seal with her hands and an enormous spiritual strength welled out of her. Those floating wind blades began to revolve around her body. Hundreds of meters away from them was the battle between their two factions. However, at this time, their battle had essentially ended. Lai Kai and Chang's people had all been defeated. Huge bumps covering their faces. They could only lie on the ground in pain. As for Long Chen, he was on the winning side, and his entire focus was on their battle now. He wanted to see what the result of their fight would be. The others were worshipfully looking at their goddess while Long Chen silently estimated the two of their strengths. This was the first time he had seen such terrifying geniuses. The two of them were definitely monsters, existences that were unmatched in the same realm. He wanted to know just how powerful the two of them really were. When Tang Wanur's spiritual strength spread out, Long Chen was greatly startled. He had never thought Tang Wanur's spiritual strength was so exquisite, although he had been tricked by her once. At that time, he hadn't had any defenses up and so he hadn't considered it to be that impressive. But now he was truly given a fright. At the same time, now that her spiritual strength had spread out, he immediately understood Tan Wanner's method of fighting. As he guessed, once her spiritual strength spread out, those flying wind blades immediately seemed to come to life and began to buzz. Phoenix plume arrow. All the wind blades converged into one, forming a three meter long arrow. That arrow's appearance caused space to incessantly tremble. When the arrow was completely formed, it appeared as if an invisible bow had appeared and knocked it back before it shot straight at Lai Kian Chang with a strength that could split apart heaven and earth. Lai Kian Chang was greatly shocked. He found it difficult to breathe in the face of this arrow. He could even feel the sensation of death coming from this terrifying arrow. Rushing Thunder Fist. Lai Kian Chang finally became aware of how frightening Tang Wanner was. Putting away his previous contempt of her. He shouted and his whole body's thunder force circulated. Countless concentrated thunderbolts gathered over his fist as he punched out. Boom. When the fist and arrow collided, a dazzling radiance exploded out. The wind blades collapsed, transforming into a terrifying hurricane that wildly surged out, enveloping everything. Everyone run. Long Chen hastily shouted out to everyone. He knew Tang Wanner's wind blades were all formed from wind energy. Once they exploded, it would release powerful energy no different from explosives. And once hundreds of wind blades exploded together, that would be exceedingly horrifying. Everyone quickly fell back when they heard Long Chen's cry. But even so, they were still swallowed by that wave of ki. Some of the weaker cultivators were even sent flying, spitting out blood. Long Chen stood at the front. This kind of ki wave wouldn't pose any threat to him. But he was still shaken by that incredible exchange. When the key wave finally scattered, Lai Kian Chang looked at his fist in disbelief. A small bit of blood was slowly dripping from his fist. Obviously, he had been at the disadvantage during that exchange. His thunder force had been unable to completely block Tang Wanner's wind blades, causing him to be wounded. Although his wound was extremely light, and it had only just broken through the skin, Lai Kian Chang was completely unable to accept this result. His Lai family's thunder force protecting the body had been praised as the strongest armor-like battle skill. Up until now, he had never received any wounds. Do you want to continue? Tang Wanner lightly brushed a fallen strand of hair behind her ear. HMPH. Although you injured me, your wind blades were also completely destroyed by me. 
So we're both even, snorted Li Kai and Shang. He wasn't necessarily wrong. Although Tang Wan'er had injured him, the wind blades she had condensed with her wind energy had also been destroyed. On the surface, it did look like both sides were even. But although Tang Wan'er had used up her wind energy, Lai Kai and Chang had also used up his thunder force. It was actually more accurate to say that Lai Kai and Chang truly had lost by a bit. If you want to say we're even then that's fine. I also don't feel the need to continue this. Your army has already been completely defeated. So according to our agreement, this Nine Leaf Orchid will be mine, said Tang Wan'er. Lai Kai and Chang's expression was somewhat gloomy. Previously, they had noticed the Nine Leaf Orchid at the same time and made an agreement that whichever side was stronger would obtain it. This agreement naturally included their underlings. Originally, Lai Kai and Chang's people were stronger, but Long Chen's arrival had changed everything. Looking at Long Chen watching him completely carefree as if he was a spectator who had bought a ticket to a play, Lai Kai and Chang became completely infuriated. You can take it, but you must receive one of my fists, shouted Lai Kai and Chang icily his whole body's thunder force circulating once more. Since you want to, then just come. Tang Wan'er's expression sank. She hadn't expected Lai Kai and Chang to be this shameless and refused to accept his own defeat, causing her to feel some fury. She once more summoned her wind blades, but this time, there were more than double the amount. Lai Kai and Chang turned a blind eye to Tang Wan'er's fury. A ball of light slowly formed in his hand. That ball was completely condensed of thunder force. A terrifying pressure came from it. Take care. Holding that ball of thunder force, Lai Kai and Chang charged at Tang Wan'er. Tang Wan'er icily smiled. That thunder ball might be powerful, full of explosive energy, but it was unable to leave his hand. With her wind blades, as long just one touched that thunder ball, it would immediately explode. So in Tang Wan'er's eyes, Lai Kai and Chang's attack had no meaning. It was nothing more than a bright firework. Tang Wan'er had just prepared herself to use her wind blades when Lai Kai and Chang suddenly disappeared from in front of her. Startled, her expression completely changed. Watch out, Long Chen. She didn't know what footwork Lai Kai and Chang had used, but somehow he had suddenly blinked away, changing his direction to shoot at Long Chen like an arrow. A distance of hundreds of meters was crossed in just the blink of an eye. He smashed that thunderball right at Long Chen as he icily shouted, Brat, you can die for me now. Long Chen himself had also never expected that Lai Kai and Chang's target was him. By the time he reacted, Lai Kai and Chang had already arrived in front of him. It was already too late for him to dodge. Taking a deep breath, he punched out. Boom. Brilliant rays of light shot out, blinding everyone. Long Chen felt a huge force attack him, sending him flying back. His organs felt as if they were flipping inside. Countless violent strands of thunder force were constantly wrecking his body. After being knocked by dozens of meters, Long Chen spat out a mouthful of blood. Startled cries rang out from the crowd. Lai Kai and Shang, you're asking for it. Tang Wan'er's voice was now full of fury. She had never thought Lai Kai and Shang would be so sly as to sneak attack Long Chen. A huge blade condensed from countless wind blades and slashed at Lai Kai and Shang. This time Tang Wan'er was truly infuriated. Boom. The huge blade slashed apart the land. But Lai Kai and Chang had already predicted her reaction and already jumped back by the time the huge blade had landed. Long Chen, you killed my right hand man. I've given you a thunder seed. You'll feel the pain of thunder force devouring your body for a whole night. That'll be my revenge for my junior brother. This matter ends here. We're leaving. Lai Kai and Chang waved his hand and was about to bring his people away. You want to leave? Do you think I'll let you? Tang Wan'er's pretty face was covered in a chilling frost as she icily glared at Lai Kai and Shang. Obviously, she was planning on making him stay behind. Long Chen, how are you ah? King Yu was the first one to come over to Long Chen, but she had only just touched his body when she let out a startled cry, her arm turning numb. Long Chen's body was completely covered in thunder force. Anyone who touched him would also be attacked. He, Tang Wan'er, although I admire you. That doesn't mean I'm afraid of you. If you really want to fight until the end, I will accompany you, sneered Lai Kai and Shang. The trial had only just begun. Before the finale, everyone would reserve some strength to fight over the core disciple positions, and so they all had misgivings about using their full strength. But Lai Kai and Shang's conduct had truly infuriated Tang Wan'er, and she was no longer thinking of that. Although she had tricked Long Chen in the beginning, that was just for revenge. But after what had happened with Xiao Wu, for some reason, his figure had slowly started to appear within her heart. 
Seeing Long Chen's injured body immediately caused her fury to go out of control. As to why that was happening, even she didn't know. All she wanted now was to give Lai Kian Chang a beating. Let him take a hike. A weak and slightly hoarse voice rang out. Tang Wan'er turned to see that Long Chen had walked over. Long Chen gently rubbed the blood off his mouth. He indifferently said to Lai Kian Shang, I underestimated you, HMPH. This is the price of killing one of my people, snorted Lai Kian Shang coldly. I never thought a gorilla would have the intelligence to launch a sneak attack against others. Ah, the times really are changing. Even the wild beasts are starting to think. It really is frightening. Long Chen sighed emotionally. You want to infuriate me? He, keep dreaming. Just properly enjoy the thunder force destroying your body. Lai Kian Chang laughed and brought his battered underlings away. He didn't notice that deep within Long Chen's eyes wasn't anger but a trace of ridicule. Chapter 146 Give me mouth to mouth translator. Born to be Long Chen. Are you okay? Tang Wan'er worriedly asked Long Chen. She still felt guilty about this. She had been too careless just now, allowing Lai Kian Chang to launch a sneak attack from a gap. She had harmed Long Chen once more. Great goddess, for you to care about me so much. Could it be that you see me in a new light? Long Chen laughed, winking mischievously. That trace of guilt within her vanished without a trace. That powerful and heroic Long Chen had definitely been possessed by a ghost or something. This infuriating hooligan was definitely the real him. Rascal, are you asking for death? Tang Wan'er glared at him. He, that's right, I like you better this way. Laughed Long Chen Novaloon.com You really are a scoundrel. I'm trying to properly talk to you. Hey wait, who cares what you like? You dare take advantage of me. Tang Wan'a realized late what Long Chen had said and grabbed his collar. Hey, 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 great goddess. Aren't you damaging your image? Us brothers are all watching. Just now we fought with our lives. And now in the blink of an eye you want to get rid of us now that we're useless? With such cruel treatment, aren't you afraid of frightening your brothers? Long Chen innocently said. Tang Wan'er blushed and only then realized everyone was watching her with shock. She hastily let go of Long Chen. Cough. This time everyone's display will be remembered by me. Once I obtain a core disciple position, I definitely won't forget to give everyone a reward. Okay. You can all leave now. Although you've all gathered the jade tiles, within this trial area are countless opportunities. Everyone should go test their luck. Time is precious. So don't tarry. After Tang Wan'er finished speaking, everyone cheered. They had used this battle to show Tang Wan'er their dedication. Now that their goals had been achieved, they all left one by one. In the end, only Tang Wan'er, Long Chen, and King Yu remained. King Yu carefully picked that nine-leaf orchid and handed it to Tang Wan'er. Tang Wan'er fondled the nine-leaf orchid lovingly. She smiled happily, her eyes turning into crescent moons. Sister King Yu, you can go as well to test your luck. Tang Wan'er put away the nine-leaf orchid. If King Yu leaves, doesn't that mean I'll be alone with Tang Wan'er? Long Chen hastily said. Sister King Yu, you can't leave. King Yu had been leaving when she paused, asking confused. Why not? Do you need something? Cough. My injuries are extremely severe. I hope sister can stay by my side to tend to me. After all, I'm at least slightly closer with sister King Yu. What do you say? Long Chen looked brightly at King Yu. Praying she would agree with him. He was truly afraid of being alone with Tang Wan'er. Although Tang Wan'er was a gentle person, Long Chen always felt this girl was extremely dangerous. Of course, King Yu didn't know what Long Chen was thinking. Feeling that his words made sense, she nodded and was about to agree when Tang Wan'er interrupted. Sister King Yu, Long Chen suffered his wounds because of me. I should be the one to tend to him. Otherwise, everyone would feel uneasy inside. She lightly said with an extremely guilty expression. King Yu nodded. Wan'er, you've finally grown up and know how to take care of others. This is a good thing. Us cultivators must definitely remember kindness and enmity. If you receive water, you must repay Ah, Sister King Yu, Long Chen's wounds require a peaceful location to heal. How about you leave first? Tang Wan'er smiled. Okay, take care of yourself. King Yu nodded without noticing Long Chen's pleading gaze. Leaving the valley. Now the only ones remaining in the valley were the two of them. A breeze blew by, chilling Long Chen's heart. Tang Wan'er looked at Long Chen. She smiled at him, her smile like a blooming flower. She didn't say anything. Which beauty acts so scary? I feel like even my bones are shivering. Long Chen was somewhat scared by her staring. Normally, being stared at by a beautiful woman was a kind of happiness. 
especially when it was a beauty so beautiful that she could bring the downfall of a nation. But when that beauty was harboring wicked thoughts, that was no blessing, but a curse. Your guts are so big, so how could you be shivering? Tang Wan'er laughed at him, taking two steps forward. The distance between them closed even more. Long Chen involuntarily took a step back. What are you thinking? Let me tell you straight away. Even if you take my body, you'll never steal my heart. Scoundrel. Tang Wan'er grabbed his collar again and raged. Who do you think I, Tang Wan'er, am? Do you think I care about a scoundrel like you? What body? What heart? How is your skin so thick? Now that she had grabbed him, her face was extremely close to his. Although her face was full of fury, that beautiful face looked just like a honey peach, causing people to irresistibly desire to take a bite. Furthermore, her scent floated into his nose. Such an atmosphere could all too easily cause someone to be capricious. Even with Long Chen's determined willpower, he couldn't help but swallow his saliva. Scoundrel, you dare look at me with such lecherous eyes. Do you believe me when I say I'll dig out your eyes? Tang Wan'er raged when she saw how odd Long Chen was looking at her. Long Chen hastily closed his eyes. Chaotic thoughts were swirling in his head. He would rather fight with Lai Kai and Chang than face Tang Wan'er like this. Scoundrel, are you provoking me by closing your eyes? You won't even look at me. Tang Wan'er still didn't let him off like this. Long Chen couldn't help but roll his eyes now. This woman truly was a devil. Compared to her, Chu Yao and Men Qi were too gentle. Thinking of them, his heart was filled with reminiscence. That day you were clearly the one in the wrong, but you actually dared scold me, saying I had no shame. That's the first time I've ever been scolded by someone like that. Tell me, do you accept that you are a scoundrel? Thinking back to what had happened that day, Tang Wan'er's fury grew even more. Long Chen had been staying silent this whole time when he suddenly coughed up a mouthful of blood which splashed onto Tang Wan'er. She was startled, realizing that Long Chen's face was becoming unhealthily pale. Only then did she remember that Long Chen had been sneak attacked by Lai Kai and Chang and had had a seed of thunder force planted into his body, heavily injuring him. Sorry, I forgot you were injured. Tang Wan'er panicked. She gently laid him down to lean against a boulder. Long Chen truly was injured by Lai Kai and Chang's attack. His thunder force had been extremely insidious, using Long Chen's body as fuel to power itself. It was extremely difficult to eject, and that was why it was called a thunder seed. Once placed into someone's body, it would constantly wreck that person's insides, making them suffer endless pain. And Lai Kian Chang had clearly known that Long Chen was powerful. This thunder seed was formed from his body's core energy. Although it wouldn't kill Long Chen, it would be enough to make him suffer for months without being able to cultivate if not dealt with. However, he had still underestimated Long Chen's body. Back then, as long as he had wished to, he could have summoned his Feng Fu battle armor and eliminated this Thunder Force seed. But Long Chen hadn't done that. That was because he had thought of a certain problem from looking at Lai Kai and Chang's body. That problem was the heavenly punishment he had endured. That previous heavenly punishment had only tested Long Chen's willpower according to that spirit world expert. But even such a heavenly punishment had almost killed Long Chen. Moreover, Long Chen suspected that the heavenly punishment would come for him again. And at that time, it wouldn't just be testing his willpower, it would only be stronger. Lai Kai and Chang's thunder seed caused him to think of a way to counter the heavenly punishment. In order to survive that heavenly punishment in the future, he should get his body accustomed to thunder and lightning, giving himself an immunity. That was a clumsy method. By constantly being struck by thunder and lightning, he could let his body become gradually accustomed to thunderbolts, forming a resistance. That was why he had been so focused on Lai Kai and Chang. Since Lai Kai and Chang already didn't like him, it would be better to just leave him as an enemy. In the future, he wouldn't have to worry about not having fighting partners. When Lai Kai and Chang had launched his sneak attack against him, he had immediately thought of the possibility of leaving the Thunder Seed in his body, and so he had not blocked his attack, allowing the Thunder Force to invade his body. Not only had he not driven off the Thunder Force, but he had also closed off all his meridians to trap the Thunder Force within his body. However, Long Chen was not Lai Kai and Shang. This was the first time he had come into contact with Thunder Force, and furthermore he was dealing with it within his body, which was extremely exhausting. Wrangling with Tang Wan'er had caused his focus to split from the Thunder Seed. In that instant, the Thunder Force had harmed his inner organs, causing him to cough up blood. Hearing Tang Wan'er's voice suddenly becomes gentle. Long Chen's heart was moved and he thought of a certain plot. 
he decided to allow the Thunder Force to wreak havoc over his body, his aura becoming increasingly unstable. Sister Wanner, I'm really sorry, I might be a scoundrel, but I hope you can forgive my crudeness. In reality, in my heart you are a sacred goddess that cannot be blasphemed against. I can sense that I'm dying. I hope you can forgive me and let me leave with my heart at ease. Long Chen's aura became chaotic, his eyes becoming unfocused. Tang Wan'er was given a great fright. At first, she thought Long Chen was just acting, but when she used her spiritual strength to check, she was horrified to see that his internal organs had begun to fail. That was something that could not be faked. She was filled with panic. Long Chen, you'll be fine. I have excellent medicinal pills here. Here, take some. Tang Wan'er hastily took out medicinal pills from her spatial ring. Long Chen shook his head and weakly said, It's useless. You should be able to sense that the Thunder Force had already filled every single corner of my meridians. How could it be like this? That bastard Li Kian Chang was really too vicious. Tang Wan'er ground her teeth. She could tell it was exactly like Long Chen said. Her heart sank. Thunder Force invading the inner organs wasn't that bad. As long as he used his spiritual key, he could slowly expel it. But once it had entered his meridians, that was like steel needles had stabbed through the meridians, destroying the structure of the meridians. Even if he managed to live, he would definitely be crippled. If Tang Wan'er's words were heard by Lai Kai and Shang, he would definitely cough up blood. Even if he was a thousand times more ruthless, he wouldn't have let his thunder force invade other people's meridians like that. That was something that had only happened because Long Chen hadn't had any defense and had even drawn in the Thunder Force. It was something that could only have been accomplished because the two of them had worked together. Cough. Cough. Long Chen went through an intense burst of coughs. His face flushed as if he had reached his limit. Breathing was becoming difficult, and he was unable to speak. Long Chen pointed to his mouth and looked at Tang Wan'er pleadingly. Tang Wan'er's jaw dropped with disbelief. You want me to give you mouth to mouth. Chapter 147 Refining Thunder Force Translator Born to be Tang Wan her pretty face was blushing so hard she felt as if it were on fire. She was a woman. How could she give him mouth to mouth? But Long Chen was almost dead and seemed to have some final words for her. He wanted to speak but was unable to because he couldn't breathe properly. No, I definitely can't. Tang Wan her's face was redder than an apple. She shook her head, embarrassed. I, Long Chen wanted to say something but he didn't have enough air. He could only cough out a single word. The rest was just his mouth clacking as he was unable to say it. Long Chen's aura was growing weaker and weaker like a candle flickering in the wind. He might die at any moment. Tang Wan'er looked at him. Looking around, she saw that there was no one else present. Fine. Since you're about to die, I'll let you say your final words. Tang Wan'er ground her teeth and slowly approached him. Long Chen's eyes brightened as he gratefully looked at her. Tang Wan'er's heart was pounding. Her cherry lips slowly approached Long Chen's mouth. Long Chen slowly closed his eyes. He, after being taken advantage of for this long, I'll finally get everything back plus interest. Long Chen was delighted inside. If others were to learn that Tang Wan'er had taken the initiative to give Long Chen a kiss, who knew how many people would be driven mad by jealousy. Long Chen was anticipating this when suddenly he felt a sharp pain on his thigh and couldn't help but let out a yelp. Aya. Long Chen opened his eyes to see Tang Wan'er smiling at him. One of her hands was viciously pinching Long Chen's thigh. Are you crazy? What are you doing pinching an almost dead man? Raged Long Chen. But then he immediately became expressionless. Ah, I'm exposed. Would an almost dead man have the energy to scold others? You really are an interesting almost dead man. Ah, right. Now that I think about it, I was dying. But then I suddenly realized if I died. You would have to see a dead man and that would be too frightening for you. So I decided not to die. Long Chen awkwardly laughed. Then I think it'd be better if you died instead. You scoundrel. Tang Wan'a raised her fist and began pounding him. Long Chen hastily covered his head as she pummeled him. However, Tang Wan'a's physical body didn't have much power. This pounding was basically just an itch. And it was almost even comfortable for Long Chen. Eventually, the pounding finally stopped. He didn't know whether she had grown tired or whether she had finally relieved all her anger. Get up. Let's have a proper conversation, said Tang Wan'er. Long Chen peeked out from behind his eyes and saw that Tang Wan'er had already stood up, her expression much milder. Only then did he put down his hands and laugh. Sister Wan'er, how did you figure it out? Long Chen was incomparably depressed inside. He had just been about to get his spoils when the ending was ruined. He couldn't help but feel vexed. Most importantly, 
He had thought his acting had been completely flawless. His expressions, actions, and even his breathing had all been perfect. How did he fail? HMPH. Although your acting was not bad, did you think you could trick me? But inside, Tang Wan Er sighed in relief from that close call. She had actually completely fallen for Long Chen's act in the beginning. It was only when he had closed his eyes that he had made a small, small mistake. Not far from Long Chen were some weeds and underbrush. With his lower leg exposed, he had brushed against a sage fruit. That fruit's hair contained a bit of toxicity. Although that toxicity wasn't strong, it was extremely itchy. Long Chen had been enduring the whole time, but when he had thought he was about to win, he had stealthily used his other foot to scratch his leg. Of course, the result was that Tang Wan Er had noticed. She had been extremely close and immediately realized he was fooling her. Would an almost dead man go scratch an itch? At the same time, her spiritual strength had stealthily spread out to examine his body. When people died, their spiritual strength would become faint and would disappear along with them. But although he had hidden his spiritual strength extremely well, it was like a boundless ocean. How was that like someone who was about to die? Then seeing him expectantly waiting for her to give him mouth to mouth, she had immediately figured everything out. Her guilt became fury and that was why she had pummeled Long Chen. Seeing that Tang Wan Er refused to tell him, Long Chen could only sigh and drop the subject. It was at this moment that the thunder force in his body surged once more, causing him to frown. Why were you so stupid to send the thunder force to your meridians? If it was just harming your organs, I could help you. In just a couple of days, you would have been completely fine. But now that it has entered your meridians, even if the thunder force is expelled, your meridians will still be severely damaged. That will require a long time to recover, wasting your precious time. Tang Wan Er had no idea why he would do such a thing. It was incomprehensible. Furthermore, she knew Long Chen was extremely crafty. She was completely unable to guess his goal. Junior brother has blasphemed against a fairy and knows his sin is deep. This was my punishment. Long Chen sighed. But just as he said this, another sharp pain came from his thigh and he hastily said, Stop pinching me. Fine. I'll tell you the truth. Only then did Tang Wan Er let go. Disdainfully look at him. If you had said the truth earlier, you could have avoided that. Why must you mess around so much? Long Chen rubbed his thigh and suspiciously asked. Guo Ran told me that you were the easiest to get along with amongst the top five. Now I doubt his words. Tang Wan Er smiled sweetly for him. Her dimples and cherry lips truly did cause people to feel close to her. Now you should feel much better, right? Tang Wan Er's voice was intoxicating. Yup. Long Chen couldn't stop himself from nodding. This version of Tang Wan Er was definitely the most alluring. HMPH. What do you mean? Yup, if you don't want to suffer, hurry up and tell me why you did this. Her face completely changed. That warmth disappeared to become anger. Long Chen sighed. Tang Wan Er had her warm, amicable side. She also had a violent, powerful side. Unfortunately, his luck was bad, and he only ever got to see one of those sides. He knew he couldn't trick her anymore. Putting away his mischievous smile, he began to speak seriously. I can tell you. But you must promise me you won't tell anyone. Seeing Long Chen suddenly become so serious, Tang Wan Er was startled. She actually didn't want to promise such a thing to him, but she still nodded. Don't worry, I'm not a blabbermouth. Only then did Long Chen explain, I want to borrow Lai Kian Chang's thunder seed to refine my own thunder force. Tang Wan Er was completely appalled. Are you crazy? How could that be possible? Why not? Long Chen didn't understand. Are you joking? Lai Kian Chang has a bloodline inheritance that can use Thunder Force. Without that bloodline inheritance, the Thunder Force will only wreck your body. You can't possibly use it. That kind of thinking is completely crazy. Is it really impossible? Asked Long Chen. Of course. The violent Thunder Force will destroy your Danshan. I'd advise you not to try. Although you are a dislikable man, your strength isn't bad. Dying would be too regretful. Tang Wan Er shook her head. Long Chen smiled. I'm very moved you care so much about me, but I've decided to refine it. Do you not care about your life? Tang Wan Er became somewhat angry. Didn't you say I was a bad person? A bad person won't die so easily. Long Chen smiled. Hearing Tang Wan Er's explanation had actually given him even greater confidence. Others might die, but he wouldn't. He didn't even have a danshan. So how could it be destroyed? If something would be destroyed, it would be his Feng Fu star. But to destroy the Feng Fu star? Long Chen didn't underestimate the Thunder Seed, but even if there were 10,000 of them, 
it would be impossible for them to destroy his Feng Fu star. Sister Wanur, you should hurry along. I'll prepare to refine it. Just refine it here. I'll stick around. If you fail and are near death, I might be able to save you. Tang Wanur shook his head. She found a place dozens of meters away to sit. Long Chen smiled slightly. Although Tang Wanur had her savage side, she had a good heart. Slowly closing his eyes, he began to circulate a spiritual key to refine the Thunder Force. Those strands of Thunder Force were wreaking havoc throughout his meridians as they wildly barged around his body. If his meridians were an ordinary blood condensation cultivator's meridians, they would have long since been destroyed, causing them to become a cripple. But Long Chen's meridians had been changed by the spirit world expert. They were much wider and also much more tenacious. That Thunder Force was unable to cause much damage. That was also why Long Chen dared to do such a thing. Now the Thunder Force that was in his meridians had become his prey. Be refined for me. Long Chen snorted. His Feng Fu star swiveled. Enormous amounts of spiritual ki began to wildly pour into his meridians, squeezing the Thunder Force. Those strands of Thunder Force began to resist with all their might when they were squeezed by the spiritual ki. Within his meridians, those two began to crazily struggle. The Thunder Force became exceptionally violent as it resisted, wanting to break out of his meridians. But Long Chen's meridians were like tough tubing. No matter how the Thunder Force struggled, it wasn't the slightest bit effective. Under the steady flow of Long Chen's spiritual ki, the Thunder Force began to compress together. But the Thunder Force was still doing its best to struggle, refusing to give up. Then let me add some more. The pill flame that was hidden within his meridian suddenly began to rage. With its addition, the Thunder Force was completely suppressed. At this time, the Thunder Force no longer had a source of energy. It was completely alone. Its violent nature gradually faded and it began to resist less and less. But this still wasn't enough. Long Chen increased his spiritual key and pill flame, using them to scour his meridians, completely condensing all the Thunder Force in his body. This Thunder Force had been like Kai and Shang's. Now Long Chen completely eradicated his spiritual imprint on them, causing the Thunder Force to become ownerless. Then he placed his own imprint on it, making it his. To Long Chen who had already refined a beast flame before, this wasn't difficult at all. The process was just somewhat troublesome. Six hours later, Long Chen opened his eyes. Although he was clearly exhausted, he was also extremely excited. Chapter 148 Failure to Steal Translator Born to be when Long Chen opened his eyes, Tang Wanner immediately noticed and asked, How did it go? Long Chen smiled slightly and raised a finger. With just a thought, his finger immediately became covered by thin bolts of thunder force, emitting a rumbling sound. Tang Wanner covered her mouth, filled with disbelief. She had thought Long Chen's plan had been completely crazy and absolutely impossible. But now Long Chen was clearly using Thunder Force, meaning he had done what she had thought to be impossible. How is this possible? Tang Wanner muttered to herself as she examined his finger that was covered with Thunder Force. He, how is it? Are you convinced? Remember to treat me better now. That way you'll be able to keep me firmly by your side. Of course, that's still not enough. If you really want to make our relationship more firm. You might consider other methods. For example, giving your heart to me, said Long Chen with a serious face. TCH, you? Do you think a rookie still at the mid-blood condensation realm is worthy of my heart? Have you still not woken up? Tang Wan raised her head disdainfully. Wait, how did you learn my cultivation base? Long Chen was startled. When you fought with Xiao Wu after he used his beast transformation, your aura leaked out. Although you hide it extremely well, you can't hide it from my senses. And I think it wasn't just me who sensed it. Lai Kai and Chang should also have noticed, said Tang Wanner lightly. Ah, as expected of monster class geniuses, those kinds of senses are truly frightening, sighed Long Chen. In the future, he would have to be even more careful. He didn't want to reveal his own cultivation base. That was because all the registrants were all at the peak of the late blood condensation realm. In other words, they were all at the ninth heaven stage and the majority were already at the great circle of blood condensation and could step into the tendon transformation realm at any time they wanted. They had merely used medicinal pills to suppress their cultivation base. Perhaps he was the only one who was merely at the sixth heaven stage. He didn't want to stand out too much. It was uncomfortable to be the center of attention. I'd say the monster would have to be you. You even have the ability to do such a heaven-defying thing. Tang Wanner pointed to his finger. Although Tang Wanner didn't want to praise him, she had no choice but to admit that Long Chen had truly shocked her. 
he was actually able to steal someone else's core energy for his own use. That kind of ability was too shocking, perhaps even heaven-defying. Long Chen shook his head helplessly. Ah, what heaven-defying? It was still a failure. What? Didn't you condense your own thunder force? Tang Wan'er said in shock. Although I refined his thunder force, my own spiritual key is unable to transform into more thunder force. In other words, all the thunder force I have is the thunder force sent to me by Lai Kai and Shang. That means once I've used it all up, I'll need to find another source to replenish it. Basically, I wasted half a day's work and didn't get much of anything. It really is disheartening, he dejectedly explained. This thunder force was not the same as his flame energy. His spiritual key was able to transform into flame energy. So as long as he had enough spiritual key, he would never run out of flame energy. But his thunder force was not the same. Once it was used up, it would be gone forever. He would need to constantly find a source to absorb more. Perhaps he would have to often fight with Lai Kai and Chang in the future. But of course, Lai Kai and Chang also wasn't an idiot. Once time progressed, he would definitely suspect something. If he refused to fight Long Chen, Long Chen would completely run out of Thunder Force. That was why Long Chen was so dejected. That wasn't the same at all with what he had been hoping for. His hope of using Thunder Force to temper his body had also failed. Actually that's already extremely impressive for your body to be able to contain lightning and thunder. But I do have a way to resolve your current problem. Tang Wan'er smiled slightly. Really Long Chen asked surprised. Of course. As long as you go there, it'll resolve everything. Tang Wan'er pointed up to the sky. When a huge storm unfurls and lightning and thunder crash down, you can go up there and gather thunder force. Haha. <laughs> Tang Wan'er began to laugh. Long Chen disdainfully said. Are you trying to make me receive heavenly punishment? Of course not. I'm just very enthusiastic. And I'm definitely a specialist at flying kites. As long as you say a single word, I am definitely willing to help you fly up. Laughed Tang Wan'er. Although she was laughing, Long Chen actually thought that was a good way to gather lightning. Seeing Long Chen was looking up into the sky and was thinking deeply, Tang Wan'er was startled and said, I was just joking. You aren't really thinking of trying, are you? Long Chen nodded. Your method really is not bad. When I'm ready to test it, I'll definitely come to find you. Dusting himself off, he began to collect some firewood. With the point of his hand, a spark shot out and immediately set the wood ablaze. What are you thinking of doing? Asked Tang Wan'er. I'm going to thank you for helping me. Although I didn't succeed, I still have to thank you and treat you to a meal. Laughed Long Chen. Her face reddened. She knew he was talking about the matter of her giving him mouth to mouth. She both bashfully and angrily said, Long Chen, if you mess around anymore, I won't forgive you. Don't worry, it will be our secret. I won't tell anyone even if they beat me to death. He solemnly swore. Although she felt as if he had said that weirdly, she saw that he was serious and so she was relieved. Once the fire was started, it wasn't long before it became a blaze. Long Chen took out ten wonder carps. You actually have caught wonder carps. Tang Wan'er was shocked. He, this is nothing. Tomorrow I'll catch two dragons for you to eat with no problem. Long Chen took out a basin of water and began to scrub the wonder carps clean. He also took out their essence from their cheeks and put those beside the fire. What kind of big talk is that? Dragons are divine beasts in legends. Whether they exist or not is unknown. How are you planning on capturing them? People need dreams. What if one day you achieve it? So dreams are definitely a must-have. Otherwise, would there even be any joy in life? Asked Long Chen. Dreams and big talk are two different things. Don't mix the two, defended Tang Wan'er. Ah, I won't talk to someone without a sense of humor. It really is tiresome. Long Chen shook his head and focused on cooking the fish. You, Tang Wan'er frowned, but she then thought of something and sat down. Long Chen, I've noticed you are extremely strange. Do you not know how to talk to normal people properly? Ah, this question. Well, the crucial point is that I'd have to encounter a normal person first. You scoundrel. Tang Wan'er couldn't resist anymore and gave him a rap on the head. Are you saying I'm not a normal person? Long Chen didn't retaliate or dodge. Letting her hit him, he turned to look at her. Beautiful sister Tang Wan'er, do you feel you are normal right now? She reddened and retorted. I'm a very normal person. I only became like this because I encountered you. Ah, well, the fishes are done. Let's eat. Long Chen handed over a cooked wonder fish to her. When she took it. She immediately smelled its alluring fragrance and began to drool. Looking at Long Chen, she couldn't help but feel a bit bad. Just eat. 
Only once you eat will you have the energy to sort me out, joked Long Chen. She blushed and turned away, opening her mouth and taking a bite. She immediately exclaimed, it's delicious. No wonder it's almost extinct in the mortal world. It's the first time I've tasted it. She was happily surprised. The Wonder Carp's great name was known to all, but as for the number of people who had actually eaten it, it was pitifully low. Haha, <laughs> as I said, treat me better and you can eat it often. And if you want to give me your heart, then he, you'll have endless delicacies to eat. Long Chen was also eating, pleased with himself. HMPH, that's a nice dream. Do you think all women are as easy to trick as you hope? Tang Wan'er had obviously already become accustomed to Long Chen's method of joking and no longer became angry. She gave him a cold retort as she continued eating. After eating one, she didn't wait on courtesy and grabbed a second one, eating it right in front of Long Chen without any bit of politeness. Oh right, you can actually control flame energy. Are you a pill cultivator? Asked Tang Wan'er as she ate. Yup, I'm a pill adept. He answered. That's pretty good. Such a young pill adept definitely has a bright future. Why wouldn't you choose to refine pills and came on the path of cultivation instead? Tang Wan'er asked puzzled. Do you think refining pills all day is interesting? The martial cultivation path is much more interesting. I can fight and pick up girls all day. Whoever I don't like, I can kick away easily. And when I see a beautiful woman like you, I can perhaps take some liberties with her. That's how to live a life. Scoundrel. You barely said a couple of normal sentences before once more fooling around. Then does your pill cultivation master approve of you choosing the martial cultivation path? She asked after rebuking him. Hearing that, Long Chen paused for a moment. Grandmaster Yun Qi's image floated into his mind. That last scene of Grandmaster Yun Qi transforming into ashes was still as fresh in his mind as if it had happened yesterday. He should approve. Long Chen shook his head. What do you mean should? She said dissatisfied. That's because he's already dead. So I myself don't know his true thoughts. Long Chen smiled slightly, but his smile was somewhat mournful. Seeing that trace of sadness in Long Chen's eyes, Tang Wan'er's heart trembled. That was the first time she sensed the sorrow deep within his heart. Okay, we've finished eating the fish. Remember, if you want to keep eating these fish, treat me a bit better in the future. I'll leave first. Long Chen stood up. Seeing Long Chen was about to leave. For some unknown reason she was somewhat disappointed inside. As for why, even she wasn't sure. Wait, Long Chen, have you collected all the jade tiles? No, Long Chen shook his head. In any case, he had more than enough time so he wasn't in a rush. At this time, there were still many fragmented sets and so it would be more troublesome to collect them all. I have a full set here. I'll give it to you. Tang Wan'er handed Long Chen a tablet. Unlike his tile, this tablet had all four Shion. D. Zuan, one words on it. The four different tiles had merged into a single tablet and could no longer be separated. Long Chen smiled slightly and received it. Ah, so this must be what it means to be kind to the one who pays for the meal. Okay, thank you. But don't think this small favor is enough for me to be unswervingly loyal to you. But if you want that, you can always try giving me your heart. Get lost. Tang Wan'er was irritated again. Long Chen had only been normal for a moment before once again messing around. She sent a kick at Long Chen. Long Chen laughingly dodged her attack and disappeared from the valley in just a few moments. Seeing Long Chen disappears, Tang Wan'er's anger faded and she actually laughed, sorting out her emotions. She also disappeared from the valley. Chapter 149 The Finch Follows from Behind Translator Born to be after Long Chen separated with Tang Wan'er, he used the tablet's map to figure out his location and pick out a new goal location. Currently, he was still at the fringes of the trial region. According to the map, he needed to cross over a large river and pass by a large mountain before reaching the final destination of the trial. But less than a week had passed into the trial so far, so he still had more than ample time. So first, he found an isolated cave and took out a wonder carp essence. The wonder carp essence was around the size of a soybean. It looked like nothing more than a round, unremarkable bone, even if it was crushed. There weren't any clues as to what it really was. He took out a black medicinal pill from his spatial ring, crushing it into a small bowl of water. The water immediately became black as ink. Placing the wonder carp essence into the bowl, that black medicinal liquid immediately began to boil over. Countless bubbles popped up, and a faint energy slowly spread. Long Chen smiled. Only this method was capable of drawing out the wonder carp's essence energy. Touching his forehead, his spiritual strength circulated. 
A faint vortex appeared between his eyebrows, absorbing the fluctuations being emitted from the wonder carp essence, not leaving even the slightest bit. In just a single breath's time, all the wonder carp essence's energy was completely absorbed. Taking out the wonder carp essence from the bowl, he saw that it had already become much dimmer, in the end falling apart like a ball of mud. That showed that all the energy within the essence had been completely drawn out. Long Chen closed his eyes and sensed his current state. His spiritual strength had advanced slightly from absorbing this wonder carp essence, but he couldn't be too sure about that because it really was just a slight, minor advancement. Over 20 wonder carp essences now appeared in his hand. These were the result of his two meals of wonder carps. Rumble. He placed them all into the bowl, causing the black liquid to once more boil. Powerful fluctuations began to surge. Long Chen didn't dare be negligent, and the vortex over his forehead once more appeared, beginning to absorb this energy. This kind of energy was invisible to the naked eye. It could only be sensed with the soul. As he absorbed more and more energy, a pleased smile appeared on Long Chen's face. With this many essences, Long Chen could clearly sense the powerful energy nourishing his soul. His spiritual strength became much livelier. The Wonder Carp Essence's energy didn't contain spiritual strength, but a kind of marvelous energy that could nourish the soul. If the spiritual strength was a tree, then the Wonder Carp Essence's energy was like its fertilizer. Under the nourishment of this many Wonder Carp Essence's energy, Long Chen could clearly sense his spiritual strength slowly growing. Although this growth was slight, it still made him go wild with joy. Spiritual strength was something that was set once you were born. It would only ever advance when you broke through realms. Treasures that could nourish spiritual strength were exceedingly few. And treasures like the wonder carp essences were essentially unknown by others. They knew about its flavor, but they thought the wonder carp essence was just trash. Unfortunately, this life ring is too low in quality. Otherwise, I could grab a couple extra fish and breed them over and over. Long Chen couldn't help but sigh regretfully. The wonder carp's reproductive ability had always been low and they were extremely picky about their surroundings. They required a clean and natural environment. Therefore, it was extremely difficult to breed them purposefully. And as for his current life ring, it could only manage to keep them alive. It wasn't capable of letting them grow more, and so he was a bit disappointed. Although the Wonder Carp Essence only offered a weak energy, it was extremely pure without any side effects. As long as he had enough numbers, he would be able to continuously nourish his soul. Grains of sand could eventually accumulate enough to make a tower. If he had enough time and enough wonder carps, his spiritual strength could continue growing stronger. To a pill cultivator, powerful spiritual strength was everything. The pool he had found the wonder carps in hadn't been very large. If Long Chen had continued using his method of catching them, it wouldn't have been long before they were all gone. Perhaps if Long Chen had really been planning on doing that, even the Zhuangshan Monastery wouldn't have permitted it so he could only take things one step at a time. After absorbing the wonder carp essences, Long Chen felt himself be refreshed and much livelier, taking a long stretch. He had also consumed a few healing pills. Thus, the damage the Thunder Force had done to his body was mostly healed at this time. I should go take a stroll around. I can't waste the Zhuangshan Monastery's treasures. Long Chen left his cave and began to walk according to the map. On the way. He saw quite a few registrants that were also searching around constantly like him. Obviously, everyone had already begun to gather at the final location from the map. Most likely, they were preparing to cross the first barrier, the huge river. When many people saw Long Chen, they couldn't help but feel nervous. But then seeing Long Chen didn't bother with them, they relaxed. Didn't you hear? That guy killed one of Lai Kai and Chang's subordinates yesterday, whispered one. I heard Xiao Wu was an extremely powerful figure and considered Lai Kai and Chang's right-hand man. Who would have thought such a person would die under Long Chen's hands? I heard that after Long Chen killed Xiao Wu, he didn't receive any punishment and was still allowed to continue the trial. People couldn't help but sigh. Back before the trial, Long Chen had been riding his powerful mount and fought fiercely with Qi Xin. They had all thought he was just some spoiled brat relying on his family's power. His third rank magical beast didn't represent that he truly had any power. That was because true experts didn't need to bring powerful magical beasts to guard them. So they had never viewed Long Chen importantly. Long Chen is definitely a dark horse. I wonder if he can stand on par with the monster class experts. Side one person. TCH. Just him? Who do you think he is to dare compare himself to monster class experts? 
Didn't you hear he immediately coughed up blood after just one of Lai Kian Chang's attacks Novaloon.com He's just bullying weaker people. In front of a monster class expert, he is unable to receive even a single blow. One person coldly snorted, obviously disdainful of Long Chen. Of course, Long Chen had no idea that the news of him killing Xiao Wu had already explosively spread. At this time, people already considered him to be the number one figure below the monster class level. Walking over a mountain, he arrived at a flat plain. The huge trees had already disappeared from this region. Taking their place were endless shrubs. These shrubs were all several meters high. After walking in, it was incredibly easy to get lost. Long Chen looked around, determining his direction, and walked in. It was extremely difficult to walk through this place. There were many thorny thistles, and the majority were poisonous. Although they couldn't break through Long Chen's defense, it was still uncomfortable and tore through his clothes. A slight mistake caused a huge hole to tear in his clothes. If he didn't think of a method, perhaps just halfway through he would be streaking naked. Suddenly, a figure rushed by Long Chen's side, causing him some surprise. Was this person so strong he didn't need to bother with the thorns? But then he immediately laughed when he saw that person. He was wearing a set of golden armor over his entire body. No wonder he wasn't afraid of the thorns. Long Chen shook his head, searching his spatial ring. He found he really did have a couple sets of armor. Long Chen thanked that fellow who had thought of robbing him back then. These sets all came from him. He found a bronze set that fit him. Now with this bronze armor covering him, he wouldn't have to worry about these thorns. After thinking for a moment, he continued looking through his spatial ring and found a helmet for himself as well. Haha, <laughs> excellent. This helmet was a full helmet that completely covered his head, leaving only two holes for his eyes. Even someone who knew him wouldn't be able to recognize him. Ah, if I want to commit some sins, having good tools is definitely a must. Long Chen was delighted. Putting on the helmet, he found that although his line of sight was somewhat restricted and it was a bit uncomfortable, it wasn't that difficult to get used to. He sent his divine sense to see things for him. He continued forward again. With this armor protecting him, he no longer worried about these thorns. This set of armor should weigh more than 150 kilograms. By relying on inertia, Long Chen could shoot forward like a cannonball. During that wild rush, even if he ran into some huge tree, he wouldn't have to dodge and could directly charge through it. Haha, <laughs> how refreshing. That was the first time Long Chen experienced such a feeling. He felt as if his heart and spirit had been released and were flying. He enjoyed the thrill of this high-speed travel. Ah, crap. While he was enjoying this refreshing feeling, he hadn't expected to run into two others. They were also wearing armor and charging forward. However, in his eyes, their speed was no different from a snail's. Get out of the way. I can't stop. Boom. Long Chen had only just shouted when he slammed into the two of them. Those two were immediately sent flying into the air, shouting in panic. With two loud bangs, those two crashed to the ground. Eight groans came from them as they rolled around completely battered. Ah sorry, this crash was definitely my fault. Long Chen was alarmed. Bastard, hand over your tile. Those two crawled up and angrily pointed at Long Chen. Taking off their helmets, he saw their hair was a complete mess and blood was flowing from their noses. There were even some brazes on their faces. He had definitely crashed into them too hard. Damn, it hurts. I can't even feel my nose. What are you just staring for? Hand over your tile. One person angrily shouted in between the pained moans. Oh, I'm sorry. Junior only just began to practice this method and isn't too familiar. This tile will be my apology to you too. Long Chen definitely felt in the wrong and handed over his Cheyenne tile to them. In any case, he already had a full set and he no longer had any use for it. The two of them continued cursing as they received the tile. Brat, this time your luck is good. Next time pay attention. Yes, next time I'll definitely pay more attention. Laughed Long Chen. Okay, let's go. Boss Key wants us to quickly gather. Don't delay Boss Key's major affair. We'll just let this kid off this time. Said one to the other, pulling on the other to quickly leave. After the two of them left, Long Chen was left wondering. Boss Key? To be called boss, didn't that mean it was most likely a monster class figure? Qishin? Long Chen turned to look in the direction they were going. He, Qishin, let me see just what you are planning. Chapter 150 Jade Butterfly Beast Translator Born to be Long Chen stealthily followed behind the two of them. After 50 miles, they finally ran into a group of people. The person at the front was wearing a set of golden armor and a scholar's band over his head. Naturally. 
That was Kishin. Over 70 people had gathered in front of him. They were all wearing armor and helmets, even using cloth to cover up any gaps. All they exposed to the outside were their eyes. Long Chen couldn't help but feel curious now. Just what were they planning on doing with such attire? He was wondering how he could noiselessly infiltrate his way in when somewhat patted him on the shoulder. What are you just standing here for? Hurry up and join them. A helmeted man shouted at him coarsely. Oh, okay Long Chen quickly agreed. Behind this man were also another dozen of people. They had probably all come together. And so by joining them, he wouldn't be so conspicuous. Boss Ki, we pretty much have everyone. We don't need to wait any longer. That person brought his people in front of Kishin and respectfully reported. Kishin looked over everyone and nodded. No need to wait any longer. We should be enough. Kishin then turned to him. How was it? Did you find any news about Long Chen? That person shook his head. Us brothers didn't find his trail. But we suspect he's hiding to heal his injuries. Lai Kian Chang's thunder seed isn't something ordinary people can endure. Kishin frowned slightly and icily said. I heard this bastard is viewed importantly by Tang Wan or HMPH. He better not let me encounter him. Otherwise, I'll let him endure my key family's 10,000 goo insects. 1. Letting him experience just what is a life worse than death. Before the trial, Kishin had sent people to force Long Chen to kowtow in apology, wanting to humiliate him. But the result was that Kishin had had to repeatedly retreat in front of Little Snow's attacks, causing him to lose face. And so his hatred of Long Chen had already sunk into his bones. After entering the trial region, Kishin had constantly been searching for news of Long Chen. Unfortunately, the trial region was too large, and it was like trying to find a needle in a haystack. 2. Okay. Everyone listen closely. This time we are handling a beehive. Our target is the honey inside, announced Kishin. Everyone's expressions became strange. Did they really need to make such huge movements to get some honey? Listen carefully. What we'll be handling won't be ordinary bees, but magical beasts. The jade butterfly bees. Kishin had long since expected that reaction. Hearing that it was the jade butterfly bees, quite a few people's expressions changed. Many people had already heard of that name, as it was just too terrifying. The jade butterfly bee was extremely beautiful with long butterfly wings that sparkled translucently like jade. That was of course why they had been called the jade butterfly bees. They weren't that large, only the size of a palm, and were considered first rank magical beasts. But they weren't true magical beasts. That was because they had no crystal core or needon. According to a stricter classification, they were only insects. But the most terrifying part about them was their venom. It had caused people to make an exception and include it as a magical beast. Its venom wasn't life-threatening, but it was incredibly painful. After being stung once, it would be so painful that it would make that person not want to continue living. Furthermore, the jade butterfly bees lived in groups. One hive of them contained thousands, perhaps ten thousands of them. If you were stung by ten jade butterfly bees, that would be enough to make you go mad from pain. Although they were all wearing armor, that armor had chinks at the shoulders, elbows, knees, etc. That was in order to not restrict the movement too much. That meant their defense was not able to stop the jade butterfly bees. Everyone's hearts trembled in fear. Although their faces were covered, the fear in their eyes was all revealed. You don't need to be afraid. With this many people, we can strike like lightning, quickly charging into the hive, grabbing the honey, and then leaving. As long as we are fast enough, it shouldn't be any problem. This is our first collective movement. I hope everyone can bring out their passion. Kishin lightly looked over everyone. His meaning was extremely obvious. If they wished to join his faction, they had to complete his work. Otherwise, he would kick them out. Their hearts trembled. The majority of them had only managed to join Kishin's faction because their families had set up the relationship. If they were kicked out, their days in the monastery would definitely not be good. Okay, everyone come with me. Kishin also put on a helmet and beckoned, bringing everyone with him. Long Chen also followed with the flow, filled with delight. He knew of the Jade Butterfly Bee, but what he cared most about was the Jade Butterfly Queen Bee Honey. Once a Jade Butterfly Queen Bee reached a certain age, it would transform into a magical beast Queen Bee. Ordinary Jade Butterfly Bees were unable to advance in ranks. From birth to death, they were all insects. But the Queen Bee was not the same. Its body was huge, and after 100 years, the Jade Butterfly Queen Bee would advance to become a true first rank magical beast. 300 years later, it could advance to the second rank. 
Only the second rank magical beast Queen Bee could give birth to Queen Bee Honey. Ordinary Jade Butterfly Honey had the effect of calming the mind, relieving pain, and detoxing poison. Furthermore, its efficiency was extremely great, comparable to a medicinal pill. But the Jade Butterfly Queen Bee Honey was a true treasure. Such a treasure had the great effect of completely calming the spirit, while cultivating, by drinking just a mouthful. It could quickly expel all distracting thoughts and let you enter the meditative state easier. Long Chen had that miraculous jade pendant and so he didn't need such a thing. But just because he didn't need such a thing, it didn't mean that others didn't. To others, it was an invaluable treasure. So even though it was not useful to Long Chen, he could bring it out to sell and exchange it for what he needed. That would definitely make enough money for him that he would never be able to spend it all. After traveling a couple of miles, Long Chen began to hear a buzzing sound. Occasionally, a palm-sized bee that looked carved out of jade would fly by. Although their wings were similar to those of a butterfly, their movements were extremely quick. Take care. Don't kill these jade butterfly bees. Otherwise, it will attract even more of them. Qishin gave them a cautious warning. Long Chen smiled slightly. He wasn't bad to know a bit about the habits of the jade butterfly bees. It appeared he could definitely provide some help for him. After traveling another stretch, everyone slowed down. That was because a huge beehive had appeared in front of them. It was not the same as ordinary beehives. It didn't hang from a tree. Instead, it was practically a house, built atop a huge boulder. Its shape was similar to a huge egg that had fallen on the ground. It was over 30 meters tall. The outside of the beehive looked as if it had been made of jade, shining brightly under the sunlight. Countless jade butterfly bees were coming and going exceptionally busily. Everyone's hearts rose to their throats. Long Chen carefully examined this beehive. At the entrance was a three-colored stripe, causing him to smile. He, this time it'll be fun. A couple of you, go probe the situation. Kishin eyed the beehive. Three people immediately stepped forward without hesitation and began sneaking their way to the beehive that was several hundred meters away. Kishin nodded pleased. The others looked at each other and sighed sorrowfully. Those three had obviously left a good impression for Kishin. But Long Chen smiled ridiculing. He scolded inside. You're really a bunch of idiots. You're all wearing helmets and armor. Who can even recognize you? If you want to display your loyalty then you should at least make sure he knows it's you. Right? The three of them moved smartly. Crawling forward slowly. Trying not to alarm those busy jade butterfly bees. Seeing the three of them slowly approaching the beehive. Everyone nervously fidgeted. Even Qishin was extremely tense. He wasn't so hopeful for these three to be able to steal the honey. What he needed was them to confirm the situation in the beehive so he could draw up a proper plan. The three of them were sneaking their way over quite well. Those bees were busy and didn't bother them. But the moment they were 150 meters away, those busy jade butterfly bees immediately stopped. The world became silent. Quick, run. Kizin's expression changed slightly, and he quickly shouted. But as soon as he spoke, Hundreds of jade butterfly bees shot straight towards the three of them. Those three were all horrified. Unable to completely defend against them, they quickly ran back. But there was still one person who was too late and was stung on the shoulder. A-H-H. That person let out a miserable scream. Although his face was covered, everyone could tell his face was twisted in pain. The jade butterfly bee's toxicity was incredibly potent. It specialized in agonizing the nerves of pain. This had nothing to do with cultivation base. In fact, someone with a higher cultivation base would have even more sensitive nerves and would feel even more pain. Once he was stung, by reflex he sent a slap to his shoulder. No. Kishin furiously roared. But he was too late. That person had already smashed that jade butterfly bee to pieces. Buzz. The moment he killed that jade butterfly bee, the entire beehive shook. Kishin was horrified to see that countless jade butterfly bees were surging out like a flood. They were practically endless. Run. Kishin didn't even need a moment to think. He had already shot away. Everyone else also knew that they had poked the bee's nest now and quickly fled. Although they ran quickly, the jade butterfly bees also weren't slow. There were immediately four or five people who were stung, letting out agonizing cries. Amongst the crowd, Long Chen laughed inside as he saw these people be stung into wailing and howling. Without any preparations, they dared provoke the jade butterfly bees. Hadn't they just been asking for this? Kishin always acted so scholarly, acting as if he were knowledgeable in many areas. But in reality, he was just an idiot. In his lifetime, he shouldn't even think of obtaining their honey. Once their group ran 50 miles away, 
those angry jade butterfly bees finally let them off, returning to their hive. Over ten people immediately collapsed to the ground, letting out miserable screams. Bang, bang, bang. Kishin waved his hand, and over ten balls of water smashed onto those people's head, immediately making them fainted. Now that those miserable screams finally stopped, the world became calm once more. Kishin's expression was ashen. He had never expected that it would be so difficult before they had even touched the jade butterfly honey. He was completely furious. Everyone maintained their silence. Those miserable cries of their comrades were still ringing in their ears. They were all people with their own prestige. If the pain wasn't completely unbearable, none of them would let out such screams. It was obvious just how terrifying the jade butterfly bees were. As everyone descended into complete silence, Long Chen spoke out with a hoarse voice. I might have a way for us to obtain the jade butterfly honey. Chapter 151 Acting Commander Translator Born to be I might have a way for us to obtain the jade butterfly honey. Long Chen's hoarse voice broke the silence. Everyone was startled and turned to look at him. That man who had patted Long Chen on the shoulder before asked, Wei San, why is your voice so rough? Long Chen's heart shook. Apparently this fellow had assumed he was one of his underlings and he was much more at ease. He hastily said, I was stung once just now. It was too painful and now my throat is sore. There was someone who immediately followed up. Of course, my leg was stung and it was incredibly painful. His voice was even rougher. Perhaps those people who had continued screaming the entire time until they were knocked unconscious wouldn't even be able to speak after waking up. There was no way around it. That kind of pain was something that could only be understood after experiencing it. Stronger will was useless. Only crazily shouting was able to relieve some of that sensation of pain. Otherwise they would go crazy. Qishin waved his hand, cutting off everyone's words. Turning to Long Chen, he asked, Your name is Wei San. Yes. Tell me your method. If it really allows us to obtain the honey, I'll definitely give you top merit and you'll get many benefits. Encouraged Qishin. Actually this method is extremely simple. The jade butterfly bees would be infuriated by fire, but smoke will pacify them, causing them to enter a sleepy state and lose most of the stinging instinct. Long Chen continued with his hoarse voice. He was actually a bit nervous Qishin would recognize his voice. But it seemed Qishin had focused all his attention of the jade butterfly bees and wasn't paying attention to his voice. Furthermore, that person had called Long Chen Wei San, so of course he wouldn't be suspicious. He was more interested whether Long Chen's method would be effective. Just this. Qishin was a bit doubtful. It should be fine. I remember that when farmers take honey from bees, they all use this kind of method. That man who was familiar with Wei San also spoke out. Okay, then let's try it. Qishin nodded. Boss Qi, what do we do with these people? Someone pointed to the unconscious members. Useless things. That first person who killed one, when he wakes up, tell him get lost. Just leave one person here to watch over them. Let's go. Qishin scolded and brought the rest of them stealthily back to the jade butterfly bees again. Having the experience of that intense pain, people no longer dared to be the slightest bit careless. Everyone was completely focused. How will we attack them with smoke? Qishin asked Long Chen. Currently Qishin treated Long Chen like a trusted aide, causing many people to feel jealous. That kid's luck really was too good. All he came up with was some random idea and he was now viewed so importantly. To guarantee our safety, we'll withdraw a couple hundred meters. Then we'll find a couple trees with high moisture content. Those trees give off the most smoke. Everyone will fan the flames and send the smoke in the direction of the beehive. We'll probably see an effect within an hour, said Long Chen. Okay, we'll listen to you then. I'm handing this matter to you to handle. All of you come over. Do whatever Wei San asks you to do. Qishin looked over everyone. Long Chen laughed inside. He was promoted so quickly. You, you, and you. Go chop those trees. Remember, they have to be alive. The more leaves, the better. You huge blockhead. What are you just standing there for? Go gather some kindling for starting the fire. Otherwise we might not be able to ignite those fresh leaves. As for the rest, go find some huge palm leaf fans. There are so many shrubs here. I don't think it'll be too hard. Remember we're one team, not individuals working for ourselves. We'll unite our efforts for a common purpose. To help Boss Qi obtain the honey. Does anyone not have confidence? At the end, Long Chen was shouting with his hoarse voice. Those people are rolled their eyes. As soon as this brat obtained an opportunity, he immediately began borrowing Kizin's power to order them around. But they also didn't dare retort because Qishin was present. Even if it was acting, 
they still had to follow through, but inside they cursed this way San. Yes, I can't hear you. Do you have confidence? Shouted Long Chen. Yes, everyone was infuriated. Long Chen truly knew how to play his part as a low status person suddenly gaining power. They all furiously replied to him. Qishin nodded, actually feeling that this way San truly had a couple of tricks up his sleeve. In just a couple words, he had harmonized the atmosphere so well. That was definitely a skillful person worthy of being put in an important position. But what Qishin didn't seem to be aware of was that while everyone's thoughts had harmonized, the atmosphere was anger, not encouragement. But in any case, they had no choice but to follow Long Chen's orders. Furthermore, they even had to work properly. That was difficult to these geniuses who had lived like princes. Hey, what are you doing? I asked you to get firewood. What are you doing bringing this withered wood over? We need thin pieces to start the fire. Without the kindling, how are you planning on starting the fire? And you, we haven't even started the fire yet. So what are you doing putting the logs here? Do you know how to start a fire? And you, Long Chen majestically criticized everyone. It went without saying that with Qishin present, no matter what he shouted, they all didn't dare refuse. Long Chen suddenly remembered that the person who had patted his shoulders, wasn't he also the one who had ordered him to kneel to apologize to his brother? Because everyone was wearing helmets, he hadn't realized that until now. But having heard his voice this much, he had suddenly realized why it was familiar. You, start the fire. Long Chen tapped him on the shoulder. That person's expression immediately changed. This brat was truly excessive. No matter what, he was the one who was Kizin's close, competent follower. But now he was ordered around like this. But he still couldn't show any anger at this time. He clearly knew that that would irritate Kishin. So he could only swallow his anger. But he swore to himself that once this matter was over, he would definitely give this Wei San a proper beating and teach him how to conduct himself. A large fire now burned brightly. Long Chen ordered others to throw on the fresh branches causing a burst of smoke, starting fanning the flames. Following Long Chen's order, everyone obediently began using the palm leaf fans, with tens of people fanning the flames, especially since they were blood condensation experts. The wind they formed was extremely great. Billows of smoke enveloped the beehive. Long Chen continuously ordered people to throw on new branches to maintain the smoke. A quarter hour later, the buzzing gradually became quieter. There were less and less jade butterfly bees flying around. It's effective. Qishin was delighted. This proved Long Chen's method was correct. Should we go over now? Qishin asked. Long Chen shook his head. Not yet. We have to wait at least a full hour before those jade butterfly bees completely lose consciousness from the smoke. If you want to be completely safe, it'd be best to keep smoking them for two hours. Okay. Then we'll be cautious and continue for two hours. Now Qishin completely trusted Long Chen now. He almost felt as if the honey was already his. After a full two hours, their group stealthily approached the beehive. The ground was covered with jade butterfly bees that were constantly squirming, but they seemed to have been confused by the smoke and didn't attack anyone. Let's go take a look at the beehive. Qishin brought everyone over, already filled with delight. Boss Qi, perhaps there might still be some danger within the beehive. Let us probe it first. Hastily said that competent aid of Qi's sins, being ordered around by Long Chen, he had long since become infuriated. Now he had a good chance so he wouldn't let it slip by. He refused to allow Wei San to become Qi Xin's favorite. He immediately rushed over into the beehive. As soon as he did, there were immediately a dozen smarter people who also followed. Long Chen merely sneered. He didn't say anything, simply staying behind Qi Xin and slowly walking forward with him. When Long Chen and the rest of them were still 30 meters away, suddenly startled cries from within the beehive along with banging. Everyone jumped, looking forward. They saw that everyone who had run into the beehive was now fleeing for their lives. A wave of key exploded out as someone took out a saber and slashed it down. But that person was instead the one knocked back. Four huge creatures crawled out of the beehive. On their backs were three meter long jade butterfly wings. It's jade butterfly queen bees. Qishin was both startled and delighted. With that shape and aura, it meant the queen bees had already advanced to become second rank magical beasts. That also meant there was a high probability that there would be Jade Butterfly Queen Bee Honey within the beehive. Everyone attacked to bring down the Jade Butterfly Queen Bees, shouted Qishin. Those Queen Bees were extremely powerful and their bodies were hard as iron. As everyone attacked, their blades only caused some sparks to shoot out when they collided with their bodies. They were unable to cause any real injuries. Use battle skills, 
seeing that their ordinary attacks were useless. Kishin once more shouted. Everyone's auras exploded. Rays of light shot towards the Jade Butterfly Queen Bees. It went without saying that although these disciples were all completely spoiled by their powerful families, their strengths were still extremely shocking. Those four Jade Butterfly Queen Bees were no longer able to endure. Under everyone's attacks, they were immediately crushed. Their deaths excited everyone. Kishin laughed heartily. Stepping forward, he walked directly into the beehive. Currently the ordinary jade butterfly bees were already unable to move while the queen bees had been killed. Now was the time to check his battle spoils. Everyone here was smart enough to know that only Kishin could take the leading position at this time. No one would fight with him for the limelight way San. You really were impressive today. Kishin's competent aide walked up to Long Chen icily. It was alright. Do you have a complaint? Long Chen shrugged his shoulders indifferently. Kid, you only just joined the faction. While we are all senior members, check your privilege or you won't have a good time in the future, he icily said. Quite a few people had taken off their helmets at this time. Hearing him scold Long Chen, they all disdainfully nodded. Kid, don't think a brief success can allow you to be arrogant. Let me tell you, arrogance has a price. You think just one bright idea can let you crawl it off our heads? Keep dreaming. Everyone disdainfully glared at Long Chen. That suppressed anger from before could now finally be released. Long Chen smiled at this group of people, not saying anything. He had no need to place these minor characters into his eyes. He was still waiting. Boom. The ground shook so hard that everyone almost collapsed to the ground. A terrifying aura was starting to rise. He, it's finally here. Long Chen smiled. Chapter 152 Jade Butterfly Queen Bee Crystal Translator Born to be everyone was taken by surprise when the ground began to shake so intensely. A loud bang suddenly came from within the beehive. A figure miserably fled from within. What? No one could believe their eyes. That was because they saw that miserable figure was Kishin. Boom. A huge monster quickly followed, charging out of the beehive. It was like cannonball, shooting straight at Kishin. At the same time, a terrifying aura engulfed them, causing their hearts to tremble. Third. Third rank magical beast. People's faces were white. Looking at that huge figure, they trembled in horror. A third rank magical beast. That was completely horrifying, completely out of any of their predictions. Kishin coldly snorted when he saw that third rank queen bee charge at him. Raising his hand, a translucent water curtain formed a shield in front of him, but that water curtain was unable to block the charge of this huge, terrifying third rank queen bee. It was only blocked for a moment before breaking through and once more charging at him. Water moon slash, clapping his hands and spreading them. A three meter long blade appeared between his hands. That wasn't a true blade, but one made of water energy. That water blade caused space to tremble. It cut across an arc, ferociously slashing at it. The water blade slashed at its head, exploding with a terrifying power. Even the earth behind it sunk. That huge third rank queen bee was actually smashed into the ground by Kizin's water blade. But what horrified everyone was that even after it received that terrifying strike, it didn't seem injured at all. It leapt out with its six legs, once more attacking Kishin. Are you guys all stupid? Hurry up and attack. Long Chen shouted out, scolding everyone awake. They all readied their weapons as they charged at the third rank Queen Bee. Long Chen also took out a large saber from his ring, acting as if he were attacking the third rank magical beast. However, his focus was still completely on the beehive. As soon as he had seen the three colored stripe on the entrance, he had known that there was a third rank Queen Bee inside. That was its distinctive marking, a warning to potential invaders. But Kishin and the others hadn't known about that warning. They had recklessly charged into its territory. If his reaction hadn't been fast enough, he would have already been killed. Everyone quickly exploded out with their greatest strength. Their weapons all attacked the third rank Queen Bee's body. But they were appalled to see their greatest strength was unable to break through its defense. Although a third rank Queen Bee wasn't a fighting magical beast, its defense was completely incomparable. Even these talented geniuses were unable to penetrate its tough shell suddenly its huge wings began to slowly spread. Everyone was alarmed. Could this queen bee fly? As for Long Chen, when he saw those huge jade butterfly wings spread, his expression immediately changed. He realized he wasn't far enough to run in time and so he jumped into the hole Kizin's attack had just dug. Long Chen's body had only just entered the ground when those huge wings suddenly began to quiver. A dust was blown out from it off its wings, immediately covering an area of over a hundred meters. Ahhh, miserable screams rang out, 
At first people didn't know what it was doing, but when they inhaled that dust or were even touched by it, they felt a similar pain to being stung by the jade butterfly bees, causing them to be unable to hold back their screams. And that wasn't anything. When the dust entered their noses, that pain directly attacked their mind, a pain that made them wish for death. Skywater protecting the body. Kishin was the first to realize its threat and directly used his water energy to protect himself. That allowed him to be fine. But every single other person was now lying on the ground, howling in pain, unable to do anything. Only some luckier people had managed to faint. The others could only suffer that infernal torment. Die you beast. Kishin raged. He jumped up, sending a kick on its head. Having just used such a powerful move, it hadn't had any preparations and was sent flying hundreds of meters away. A spear now condensed from water energy appeared in his hands, stabbing at the queen bee. That queen bee's strength was only average. Its most dangerous part was its stinger, but with its huge, awkward body, it was impossible for it to stab its stinger into enemies. Other than that, only its defense was exceptionally sturdy. Its six legs brought it crazily charging at Kishin, its mouth wildly biting at him. Even with Kishin's confidence, he still didn't dare be caught by its mouth. The spear in his hand stabbed out continuously, fiercely facing off against it. Wu, Long Chen crawled out of the ground, but he immediately sensed some pain when he breathed and hastily consumed an antitoxin pill. Examining the situation, he saw it was a complete mess. People were constantly twitching and moaning on the ground. Further away was Kishin in a fierce fight. All his attention was now focused on his fight with the Queen Bee, and he didn't pay any attention to this place. Long Chen smiled slightly and stealthily slipped into the beehive. After entering the beehive, he used his spiritual key to protect his body, not daring to be the slightest bit incautious. But once he was inside the beehive and saw its current state, he let out a breath. Although there were countless jade butterfly bees inside, they had already lost their senses at this time. All he had to do was avoid stepping on their stingers. Within that huge beehive were huge honeycombs. Inside those honeycombs was a gleaming liquid that was slowly flowing. Ah, too bad there are too many of the jade butterfly bees here. Otherwise I could absorb the entire beehive. A spatial ring was unable to absorb living things. If he wanted to absorb this beehive, he would have to completely remove every single jade butterfly bee. That would waste far too much time. Furthermore, Long Chen was already extremely pressed for time. He definitely couldn't stay here for long. Although the queen bee might be strong. Its attacking power wasn't great. It couldn't pose a menace to Qishin. So its loss was only a matter of time. Long Chen examined the surrounding honeycombs. He didn't immediately start collecting. But instead walked in deeper. The outer region was just the ordinary honey and didn't fetch that high of a price. But after walking in a couple dozen meters. Several huge honeycombs appeared before him. Each of those honeycombs held dozens of hexagonal cells that were arranged just like countless water jars. Each cell was completely filled with bright liquid. Even before he walked close he could smell its sweet scent which seeped into the deepest part of his lungs. Haha, <laughs> there's actually this much jade butterfly queen bee honey. Long Chen couldn't help rejoicing. He counted four of these huge honeycombs. Thinking of those four queen bees that had come out previously, he immediately understood that they had each had one here. He completely absorbed those four honeycombs. Just obtaining one would have completely satisfied him. Now that he had obtained four, flowers almost starting blooming inside his heart. But Long Chen knew that his harvest today wouldn't stop just here. He continued slowly walking forward. When he reached the end of the hive, Long Chen had even stopped breathing. At this place there was an enormous honeycomb. It was almost as tall as the entire beehive, at least being 30 meters tall. Inside, it was filled with honey. But it wasn't liquid, but actually crystal. It was absolutely enchanting. Jade Butterfly Queen Bee Crystal, Long Chen exclaimed. This was definitely the true treasure. The effect of the Queen Bee Crystal was definitely at least 10 times greater than the Queen Bee Honey. Only with his powerful mental strength did he manage to stop his heart from pounding out of his chest. He grabbed the honeycomb and pulled, breaking it off from the rest of the hive, and stored it into his spatial ring. Looking at this empty part of the beehive, Long Chen felt as if he were dreaming. His luck had really been too good today. After absorbing the last queen bee crystal, Long Chen thought for a moment and took our spear from his spatial ring. He stabbed open a small hole that could easily fit him so that he could walk out at any time. Long Chen was a thrifty man, and waste wasn't his style. There were still hundreds of honeycombs out there he had yet to collect. Those only contained the honey from the ordinary jade butterfly bees. But of course, 
that was still an excellent thing to have. Even if you didn't use it to cultivate, it was also a beauty product that could make someone even more beautiful. However, that honey was not as pure as the Jade Butterfly Queen Bee honey in the sense that there were actually quite a few Jade Butterfly Bees that were lying within the honeycombs, quivering. He had to take them out one by one in order to absorb that honey. Luckily, he still wasn't worried yet. He could still hear the sound of Ki Zin's fierce fight. He began to hum a familiar tune. Today's a good day. I can achieve anything I want. One. But after the time it took for an incense stick to burn, Long Chen heard the sounds of fighting gradually become quieter. After a couple loud bangs, everything became silent. Long Chen knew the time had come. There were still dozens of honeycombs he had yet to collect. But he sighed. I'm so easily satisfied. I guess I'll just leave these for them to heal their wounds. The Jade Butterfly Bee's toxin was definitely extremely painful. Its toxin normally wouldn't kill anyone. It could make someone go insane from the pain. But its honey was the best cure for it. He slowly walked out the back of the beehive. He could hear footsteps getting closer. They were about to reach where he was. But at the end, he thought about leaving something. Ah, doing bad things without leaving my name isn't my style. He took out a brush from his spatial ring and left a bold line of words with the honey as ink. He then slipped through the opening he had made, stealthily leaving. Kishin had used his full strength to fight, finally killing the third rank queen bee. It went without saying that Kizin's strength was frighteningly great, but killing a third rank magical beast had also exhausted him. His armor was cracked all over, and blood even dripped from some of those places. And that was only because his luck had been good. That queen bee wasn't suited for attacking. Otherwise if he met a third rank magical beast overlord like Little Snow, he definitely would only be able to flee. He had killed the third rank queen bee, but he wouldn't gain anything from its corpse. That was because the jade butterfly bees were not like other magical beasts and didn't have a needon or a crystal core. The only thing of value they possessed was their honey. Slowly walking into the beehive, he saw the many honeycombs and relaxed. Everything had been worth it. He walked in and continued exploring. But once he reached the halfway point, he realized something was wrong. That was because these honeycombs were completely empty. And the huge honeycombs he had thought would be here were not present. Quickening his footsteps. He reached the end of the beehive and realized everything was gone. He was indescribably astonished. Suddenly a glimmer of light attracted his attention and he turned to look. His blood surged as his eyes almost spit out flames. Now even someone with Kizin's cultivation base was completely infuriated and coughed up blood. There was a small hole there. Adopt that hole was a line of words. Long Chen was here. Long Chen, I'll kill you. Kizin's angry roar caused the beehive to tremble. His berserk aura then exploded causing the beehive to completely collapse. Chapter 153 Fierce River Blocks the Way Translator Born to Benevaloon.com Long Chen had run several miles away when Kizin's furious row rang out from behind. He shook his head. Do you need to be like that? The honey had never been yours in any case, and it wasn't as if I literally snatched it out of your hands. Was it worthwhile to release such fury? And furthermore, if it hadn't been for my idea, you wouldn't have even been able to touch bee urine let alone their honey. And didn't I also leave you some? That's enough for you guys to split. But once he reached this point in his thoughts, even he ended up turning slightly red. If he had had enough time, with his pragmatic nature, he definitely wouldn't have left any behind at all. The sky had already begun to darken. But for safety concerns, Long Chen continued running forward. He definitely didn't want to encounter the crazy Qishin. Such monsters all had shocking techniques. But he was only at the sixth vestige of blood condensation, and so fighting with them would definitely make him suffer a huge disadvantage. After another hundred miles, he began to notice more and more signs of other people. That was a relief. As with this many tracks, it was impossible for Kishin to chase after him even if he wanted to. Looking forward, he saw he had already reached the end of this wilderness and had entered a mountain range. He rushed over to the mountains. He found a clean cave for himself and took out a cup pouring half a cup of queen bee honey and half a cup of water, mixing them with a chopstick. A dense fragrance refreshed his heart. Drinking a mouthful, its sweetness slid down easily, the sensation deeply penetrating his heart and mind. He felt as if his pores had all been opened, causing him to become incredibly relaxed. Delicious. Long Chen was intoxicated. Such pure honey didn't need to be balanced with anything else and was still able to let you feel like you were gaily floating in the clouds. At the same time, it swept away any pains. It truly did have a miraculous effect of calming both body and mind. 
It allowed you to focus easier and enter your meditative state. But no matter how great the honey was, it was incomparable to Long Chen's jade pendant. With the jade pendant, Long Chen was able to enter his meditative state in just a few breaths. But for most ordinary people, even geniuses, it would require at least four hours to enter their meditative state with the assistance of the Queen Bee Honey. That was because such a state was extremely miraculous and mystical. It was an extremely rare opportunity. But even so, the Queen Bee Honey's use was still enough to cause people to go crazy. Finishing that cup of honey, he lay back on an icy boulder and looked up at the starry sky. Another busy day had passed. The Long Chen in the day was vigorous and lively, perhaps even too much so. But once it was night and he was alone, he was filled with loneliness. He didn't know how Chu Yao was. Was she training hard in the Skywood Palace? With her gentle nature, was she being pushed around? And Men Qi, had she consumed the soul-nourishing pill he had sent her? He didn't know just what realm the current her had reached. He had even less information about how his parents were. Had his mother become accustomed to passing her days without her son by her side? During the day, Long Chen would play around as crazily as he wished, making himself as busy as possible. That way he wouldn't have the time to think about these things. But during the night, not a single sound could be heard. Worries and anxiety pressed upon his heart, making it so he almost couldn't breath. And he was also completely lost when it came to his own future. Back when he had only just been born, someone had taken his spirit root, spirit blood, and spirit bone. It was a miracle that he hadn't died as a baby after that. And the powerful expert who had fled with him as a baby was actually just a servant. Then just who were his real parents? Wasn't it very likely something unexpected had happened to them? He gently rubbed the jade pendant. The lines of words on them were still completely clear. The dragon roars at the heavens, looking down arrogantly on the mortal world of dust. Live peacefully and happily, never to be parted. Within those words were endless warmth and expectations, as well as a powerful feeling of love. That definitely proved just how much his parents loved him. Even as weak baby, Long Chen had already met such vicious methods. That caused him to be extremely worried about his parents. To dare do such a thing to him. That meant that his enemy didn't fear his parents. There was even a possibility that his parents had already. Long Chen didn't dare continue that train of thought. Just where had he come from? Just what happened to his body? What person would be so ruthless to a baby? And what could possibly be their goal? These endless questions continuously bounced around in his head. His mind was a complete mess. Furthermore. There was that voice that had occasionally rang out in his head, as well as that vision of a fist shattering apart the very heavens from that destructive man. This all made Long Chen feel like his head might explode. Taking a deep breath, he shook his head, putting away those questions. In any case, as long as he could keep surviving, there would be a day when the truth would reveal itself. What he needed to do now was eat, play, and grow properly. He would save up enough strength that he would eventually uncover his origin. His father had told him that as long as he one day stood at the peak of the cultivation world, he would naturally learn what had happened. Currently, he was just a beginner in the blood condensation realm, but every day he was quickly maturing. He believed that that there really would be a day when he would reach that level. Taking a deep breath, with the assistance of the jade pendant, Long Chen expelled all those distracting thoughts and began to cultivate. He summoned his divine ring into his dantian. He began to absorb heaven and earth's spiritual key nourishing his blood. Although Long Chen's dantian was deathly silent, that empty space now had countless uses for him. Long Chen was able to summon his divine ring there to cultivate. He could also condense the flame energy within his meridians there. And now he could also gather his newfound thunder force there as well. His empty dantian had become a place where he could gather all kinds of different energy. He could rent it out as he needed. That was the first time Long Chen felt the benefit of not having a dantian. One. A normal dantian could only contain a single type of energy and thus you could only cultivate a single path. That was like how a pill cultivator's dantian could only contain flame energy. If they tried to cultivate another type of energy, those energies would clash and their dantian would immediately explode. Under the full force of the divine ring, his absorption speed of spiritual ki had reached a frightening level. But Long Chen had noticed that after entering the blood condensation realm, each level required double the time of the previous level to advance. If it was just purification, then with the support of his divine ring, it wouldn't have been any problem. But after each advancement, he needed to wait a period of time to restore his blood energy. Only once that blood energy had reached its saturation point could he once more purify his blood again. The restoration period was extremely long. 
Even the assistance of the Divine Ring didn't help. It had already been over 10 days since his last advancement, but his blood energy had yet to reach saturation, so he was unable to purify his blood again. The continuous absorption of heaven and earth spiritual key with his divine ring did allow his blood to be nourished and recover about 10% faster. Although that wasn't much, at least it was better than nothing. The next day, Long Chen had already set out before the sun's first rays had spilled over the horizon. According to the map, after another two large mountains, he would arrive at a river. Only by crossing that river could he reach the final destination. Long Chen found that there were more and more people here. He looked around. But he didn't see Guo Ran and had no idea how he was. However, that guy was extremely shrewd. He doubted any major problems would come up for him. Long Chen followed the flow of the crowd forward. Those who were able to reach this point were all experts. Those who had had their jade tiles snatched away had essentially all stayed in their original positions to see if they could find any good opportunities. According to the monastery's rules, as long as the trial wasn't over, even those who had lost their tiles could stay within the trial region. During the remaining time, they could look all over for some natural treasures. This could also be considered a kind of compensation for them. As for how much those people could obtain, that would be up to their luck. This way, even those registrants who failed to join the monastery would also have some harvests. This was the monastery's way to settle things with them. In this manner, there would be no one who would hold a grudge. It went without saying that the monastery's rules were extremely clever. Some of those experts had been quietly talking amongst themselves, but as soon as they saw Long Chen, they immediately shut their mouths, a trace of fear in their eyes. Long Chen shook his head. Was he so terrifying? But what he didn't know was that he was even more terrifying than monster class existences to them. That was because monsters didn't kill people. After this long, the news of him killing Xiao Wu had already been heard by everyone. They naturally had also heard that Long Chen had been struck by Lai Kian Chang's Thunder Force Seed. But now seeing how lively Long Chen was, it seemed he hadn't suffered any injuries at all. He was glowing with health. How was that the image of someone who was tormented by Thunder Force? Long Chen continued advancing, going past one of the huge mountains, finally allowing him to see what lay beyond. That would be a huge river. That river was extremely wide, most likely stretching 3,000 meters. The surface of the water was extremely mild. Dozens of experts were standing on the river bank seeming to be discussing how to cross the river. This river was too wide. While none of them could fly or had flying magical beasts, they had to think of something. There were countless terrifying magical beasts in this trial region. There had already been quite a few registrants who had died to magical beasts during this time. So everyone was wondering just what creatures lay within this river. No one would just foolishly swim across. Long Chen also paused here, looking at the river water. He frowned. This water was extremely dirty and it was impossible to see deeply into it. After pondering for a moment, he took out a cooked cow leg from his spatial ring and threw it into the river. That was just one of his random rations he carried around. The cow leg splashed within the water. That splashing sound attracted everyone's attention. They all turned to look there. Suddenly, large ripples appeared over the water and the cow leg sunk down into the water, disappearing. What? Everyone was alarmed. That was because they hadn't been able to clearly see what it was that had appeared before the cow leg had disappeared. That was too strange. Senior apprentice brother Long Chen. Just what was that? Asked one brave person. Tidramuth fish. This time there's something fun to play with. Lightly said Long Chen. Heavens. How does this place have such vicious things? People exclaimed fearfully. Tidramuth fish were extremely vicious. They weren't magical beasts. But over two thirds of their bodies were taken by their mouths. Their mouths were similar to those of a tiger with sharp teeth that could bite even rock. They weren't large, only growing to the size of a foot. But they usually lived in groups. Even a huge magical beast would immediately be completely swallowed by a school of them. They were extremely terrifying. It's over. There's no way to cross this river. People immediately despaired. This was something they couldn't possibly accomplish. As more and more people gathered here, suddenly a burst of startled cries rang out. A fragrant breeze blew by as a beautiful woman slowly walked over. Chapter 154 Ice Fairy Translator Born to be picturesque eyebrows and skin white as snow. Her colorful robes drifted gracefully with the wind. But her face seemed as if it had been made from cold jade without a trace of warmth. The person who arrived was the ice beauty Ease Hikyu. She gracefully walked over to the riverside. Obviously also wanting to cross. Everyone descended into absolute silence as they watched her. 
They wanted to see just how Ye's Hikyu, a monster class expert, would cross this river. Perhaps they could even follow her. Everyone was filled with anticipation. Their intuition told this terrifying river was definitely unable to stop Ye's Hikyu. Ye's Hikyu merely indifferently looked at the river water, slowly turning her head. She glanced at the crowd. When she saw Long Chen, a slight fluctuation came from that jade face of hers that seemed like it wouldn't change even in 10,000 years. Do you want to go together? She asked, looking at Long Chen. No, thank you though. I have my own method to cross. Long Chen smiled slightly, but he politely declined her kindness. He knew Ye's Hikyu definitely had her own way to cross. While it would have been convenient to go with her, he felt uncomfortable with this icy beauty. He would rather face the fickle Tang Wan'er than Ye's Hikyu. At least he could tease Tang Wan'er a bit, but he had no desire to do the same with Ye's Hikyu. Countless people's hearts dripped blood when they saw Ye's Hikyu invite Long Chen. They were filled with jealousy. How was this brat so lucky for him to obtain even the Ice Beauty's appreciation? But when they heard him decline, they looked at him as if he was an idiot. But there were also several people who admired Long Chen's pride. He was absolutely wild and didn't care about any of them, even her. Ye's Hikyu didn't have any reaction when Long Chen declined. She merely nodded and turned back to the river. Sister Ye, you can't. Within the water there's, someone let out a startled shout, thinking Ye's Hikyu was attempting to swim over, but halfway through he shut his mouth. Everyone was shocked to see that when her foot touched the water, it didn't sink. She stood atop the water. People hastily looked below her feet to see that a layer of ice had formed over the water. When people finally understood what she was doing, she was already continued walking gracefully like an ice fairy. With each step, more ice formed on the river. Her long hair and robes fluttered in the wind, causing people's hearts to sway along with them. It was as if they were looking into a portrait. When Ye's Hikyu had walked dozens of meters in, the water below her began to surge as countless Tijermuth fish began to swim over. They naturally didn't care about her beauty. In their eyes, she was just prey. People let out alarmed warnings, but Ye's Hikyu ignored them all just continuing to walk forward slowly. Suddenly those Tijermuth fish that were charging over all became still. Only then did they realize that Ye's Hikyu's ice had spread several meters into the water now. Those Tijermuth fish were all frozen solid. Everyone was filled with shock as they looked reverently at that figure. This was a monster class expert. It really was too frightful. To them, this long river was like a heavenly chasm they were unable to cross. But to Ye's Hikyu, it was a flat and open road. Long Chen was also incredibly stunned. That was because he saw that Ye's Hikyu's control over ice energy had already reached the level where she could control it at will. That would be even more terrifying when fighting. Ye's Hikyu quickly crossed the river and stepped onto the other shore, disappearing from everyone's view. Only then did they recover from their stupor. One of them suddenly also stepped onto the ice path she had left behind, wanting to borrow Ye's Hikyu's leftover path to also cross. But that person had only run a couple meters across when the ice below him cracked. He let out a startled cry as he fell into the river. Having fallen into the river, his expression changed greatly and he quickly began to swim back to shore. But he had only swam a couple strokes when he let out a blood-curdling shriek. Long Chen took out a long rod and tossed it to that person, yelling, Grab on. That person hastily grabbed it without even thinking about it. Long Chen flung him out of the water, bringing him flying to the shore. Only at this time did others come to help. They saw that blood covered his entire body and there were bite marks all over him. It wasn't as bad as it could have been. Luckily you can still have children. One, rejoiced one of them. There were immediately people who choked on their own spit. There were still women right there. So saying such a thing wasn't exactly appropriate. Thank you for saving me. After consuming a medicinal pill, that person gratefully thanked Long Chen. If it weren't for Long Chen. He definitely wouldn't have been able to reach the shore before being eaten by those Tijermuth fish. From the moment he had fallen into when Long Chen had gone to rescue him, less than a breath's time passed, but he was already so wounded, horrifying everyone. No problem, it was nothing, laughed Long Chen. Although this person was neither a relative or a friend, he couldn't exactly just watch as he was eaten by the fishes. Senior Apprentice Brother Long, how can we cross this river? Please show us the way. One of them bowed to Long Chen, clasping his hands before him respectfully and sincerely. Long Chen shook his head. This river is one of the tests the monastery has left for us. You have to rely on your own methods. Everyone despaired when they heard that. Such a test was too cruel. One person thought for a moment and threw in a large piece of floating wood and jumped onto it. 
but they only floated over a couple meters before the Tijermuth fishes attacked them. They were extremely sly. Since they were unable to reach the people on top the wood, they wildly bit at the floating wood, completely tearing it apart in just a couple breaths time. Luckily that person had long since been prepared for that result. The moment they had begun to bite at the wood, he had jumped back to shore. Everyone sighed sorrowfully when they saw that this method had also failed. A boat couldn't cross it, and it wasn't as if they had wings that could fly. Could it be that this would be as far as they could go? They had only managed to gather a complete set of tiles with great difficulty, just to end up stuck here. They were truly unwilling. Everyone looked at Long Chen, wanting to see how he would cross. Long Chen shook his head inside. This group of spoiled kids really had never learned anything useful. Long Chen looked around for a moment and saw a large tree. It was over 300 meters tall and perfectly straight. He walked in front of it and began to climb, reaching the upper half. He took out a piece of rope and securely tied it to the top of the tree. He then jumped down and walked to the mountains. He found a huge rock and dragged it over. He then pulled on the rope. In front of everyone's shocked eyes, that huge tree that required several people to wrap around creaked and groaned as it bent over. The entire tree was constantly quivering, letting out an unpleasant sound. Once it was bent enough, Long Chen tied it securely to the boulder. He then placed himself atop the tree, looking at those shocked faces. He thought for a moment and used a sword to cut off a branch and threw it to them. That stick inserted itself straight into the ground. As for Long Chen, he waved his sword in goodbye and then cut the rope. The bent tree immediately was relieved of its pressure and sent Long Chen flying. Long Chen let out a cry as he flew out like a cannonball. In front of everyone's stunned gazes, he flew all the way to the other shore. Ah, crap, boom. Long Chen smashed into a huge mountain. Countless stones began to roll down because of him shocking the surrounding birds into flight. As for the people watching on the other side, their jaws dropped, unable to say anything for a moment. He couldn't have smashed himself to death. Right. Someone finally muttered. A normal person would definitely have been smashed into meat paste from that kind of force. Long Chen crawled out from the stone mountain. He spit several times, feeling as if his mouth was filled with stone ash. Ah, being in the limelight really wasn't a good thing. I should have used a rock first as a test. He thought to himself. Long Chen brushed off the dust on his body and then disappeared from the crowd's view. Seeing Long Chen leave, those people all sighed a breath of relief. He was definitely a freak. How could they possibly imitate him? Wait. Senior apprentice brother Long Chen left us a clue. Suddenly cried out someone. TCH. What clue? If we used that method, all of us would be turned into meat paste. Someone else rolled his eyes. How could they possibly copy that? No. Look at this stick. That person hastily pointed to the stick excitedly. People paused for a moment, looking at that stick. That was something Long Chen had purposely thrown down to them before leaving. They had no idea what it meant. Ugh, what's that smell? One of them had approached to take a closer look at this clue and immediately smelled an incomparably repulsive smell, making him noxious. Pinching his nose, that person pulled the branch out of the ground and saw the spot it had been cut off from was leaking a yellow liquid that was releasing the smell. Ah, I understand what senior brother Long Chen was telling us. That person excitedly shouted. Seeing that everyone still didn't understand, he cut off a part of the branch, tied a piece of ham to it, and threw it into the river. Those Tijermuth fishes which would normally wildly react to any sound actually didn't go over at all. That piece of ham just continued to float in the water. Everyone looked at each other and cheered. So those Tijermuth fishes were repulsed by that kind of smell. In other words, they could use those kinds of trees to form rafts and they wouldn't be attacked by the Tijermuth fishes. Everyone was indescribably grateful to Long Chen. This was no different than saving their futures. Everyone got to work searching for that kind of tree and making rafts. In reality, this test was extremely simple. The snail stink camphor's famous name was known to most cultivators. Unfortunately, these spoiled disciples that had lived like princes and princesses hadn't known of it. That was why Long Chen had labeled them as people without any useful skills. Because of such a small thing, so many of these geniuses would have failed, forfeiting their future prospects. That would really be regretful. And so Long Chen had given them a clue. If they were unable to even understand that clue, then there was no need for them to cultivate. They might as well be used as fish food. After passing the river, Long Chen once more began to search through the wilderness for natural treasures. But it seemed he had used up all his luck as he didn't find anything of great value. Half a month passed. Long Chen had no choice but to start following the map to the final location of the trial.
But at this time, he suddenly felt intense shaking coming from the earth. At the same time, terrifying auras began to soar. Chapter 155 Profound Spirit Fruit Translator Born to be it's the aura of monster classic spurts. Long Chen was startled. Those auras were incomparably powerful, soaring straight into the clouds. Only monster class experts had such powerful auras. Furthermore, this time the auras were incredibly intense, much more intense than when Lai Qianchang and Tang Wan'er had fought. I've gotta go check it out. Long Chen quickled his footsteps, rushing over as quickly as possible. But that place was extremely far, and Long Chen had to rush for two full hours before getting close. No way, it's this intense. When he saw the scene before him, he was completely stunned. Lai Qianchang, Qishin. Yu Zifeng, Tang Wan'er, and Ye Zhikia were all present, and most inconceivable of all, they had actually formed two teams that were crazily fighting the other, their terrifying battle shook the heavens and caused the land to shudder, they were fighting three against two, as at some unknown point, Tang Wan'er and Ye Zhikia had formed an alliance to face off against the other three, Lai Qian Shang, Qishin, and Yu Zifeng were all fighting with their full strength, thunder and lightning rolled, key waves surged, and sword key slashed as they fought against the two women. This was the first time Long Chen saw Yu Zifeng fighting. That long sword in his hand shot out a ray of light that was 30 meters long, cutting apart the sky, whistling through the air, and possessing a terrifying destructive strength. Tang Wan'er was surrounded by hundreds of revolving wind blades that were like hundreds of flowers in full bloom, wildly resisting their attacks. Beside Tang Wan'er was Ye's Hikyu. A layer of ice frost covered her palm, and with each wave of her hand, Illusory figures would fill the sky. Those illusory figures were all formed from terrifying ice key. The ice key released by each of her palms was enough to chill their hearts. Even though they were three against two, the three of them were extremely apprehensive about the ice key and kept their distance. Five monsters stealthily gathered here to fight. Are they fighting for the position of number one? But he didn't feel that was likely. Examining the surroundings, his gaze suddenly fell towards a distant cave. So that's why. That cave was a couple dozen meters large. Within it was a one meter tall sapling. The sapling had given birth to a fist sized fruit. That was the profound spirit fruit. One, it was no wonder they would be fighting. Long Chen finally realized the cause of their battle. The profound spirit fruit was an extraordinarily rare and miraculous treasure. Its tree could only bear one fruit once every three years. If the fruit blossom ever withered, the entire tree would immediately die along with it. But if it bore fruit, then once the fruit matured, the fruit had to be picked within two hours time or it would rot away. This fruit had a heaven-defying effect, that was to allow blood condensation experts to have a high chance to perfectly advance to the tendon transformation realm. A perfect advancement was the dream of countless martial artists. Cultivating was just like building a skyscraper. Only if the foundation was sturdy could it be built higher. Normally, only once a spirit root reached the silver grade could there be a chance of a perfect advancement but that probability was only around 30%. 70% of those who possessed even silver grade spirit roots were unable to achieve a perfect advancement to tendon transformation. It was no wonder these monster class geniuses were fighting so hard. Was the reason they had suppressed their cultivation bases also because of this profound spirit fruit? He then realized the five of them were surprisingly far from the cave. Searching for why, he saw a line of words over the cave. Those who damage this tree will die. That line of words was extremely clear. They were written boldly as a warning. Long Chen understood that such a precious treasure as the profound spirit fruit was probably a one of a kind in the Zhuangshan Monastery. Perhaps this was also why their disciple selection only occurred once every three years. They naturally would take precautions against those registrants from harming it. Despite Ye Zhikyu and Tang Wan'er fighting together, they were still at a disadvantage against the three others. They were being forced back step by step. Long Chen hesitated for a moment. Just watching wouldn't be too suitable. After all, he was at least a bit more friendly with Tang Wan'er and Ye Zhikyu. Furthermore, even if he didn't care about those two beauties, didn't he still have to at least deal a blow to Lai Qianchang and Qishin? Those two had already become mortal enemies with him. If he let them obtain the profound spirit fruit, that would definitely be disadvantageous for him. Hey, you three shameless fellows. How can you bully two weak women in broad daylight like this? Now that I've arrived, why haven't you stopped yet? Long Chen swaggered over, shouting. His hands were clasped behind his back as if he were some expert. Hearing Long Chen's voice, Qi Xin's face immediately darkened. He began to almost involuntarily shiver. 
That voice had already been carved into his bones. Long Chen, Qishin and Lai Kian Chang both gnashed their teeth as they spit out his name. As for Tang Wan'er, she was pleasantly surprised to see him. Long Chen winked at Tang Wan'er before turning to Lai Kian Chang and Qishin. You two are so malevolent and I see a devilishness within your eyes. I was just strolling around. But now I will take the place of the heavens to punish you evildoers. If you two don't stop now, then I'll have to take action to put away you two demons. Long Chen's words were only towards Qishin and Lai Kian Shang. He had no enmity with Yu Zifeng, and there was no need to drag him down with them. This scoundrel, does he not know how to fear? Tang Wan'er barely kept back a laugh. She called to Long Chen. There's no need for you to take action. Go over to the cave. The profound spirit fruit is about to fully mature and you have to pluck it at the earliest moment. Although she felt Long Chen was powerful, he was unable to compare to them. Now for the fight for the profound spirit fruit. Everyone no longer held back, so she was afraid he would injure himself. That's a nice plan, but how about you die for me instead? Qishin angrily roared. He actually directly withdrew from their fight and shot at Long Chen. He was still about to go crazy from rage about what had happened with the honey. He had painstakingly worked for so long, all for Long Chen to swoop in at the last moment and take all the benefits. If he hadn't encountered the real Wei San later, he would still not even know how he had managed to steal all that honey. His entire faction had been played just like that. That had angered him so much it felt as if he might explode. He wished to swallow Long Chen alive. Furthermore, even having suffered such a loss, he didn't even dare to make it public. Now that he saw Long Chen, even with his cultivation base, his body was constantly trembling. Just what level of anger had Long Chen caused him to reach? You brazen demon, you dare look at me with those eyes? Then don't blame me for taking the place of the heavens to punish you. Long Chen pointed at Qishin. Die. Qishin's face turned green. A huge water blade appeared in her hand. He viciously slashed it down on Long Chen like a guillotine. This weapon was condensed out of water energy, but it wasn't the same as the previous ones he had condensed. This one had strange lines over it, a sign that it had been made of core energy. Careful. Tang Wan'er gave him a warning, not expecting Qishin to be so crazy. That attack was his full strength. He actually wanted to kill Long Chen. Both she and Ye's Hikia were both startled. They didn't know what had happened with Long Chen and Qishin, but it was already too late for them to go save him. If you're still alive, why would I die? Long Chen took out a black spear. That was one of his spoils of battle and it weighed over 3,000 kilograms. At this time, Long Chen no longer reserved anything. His Feng Fu star circulated and an explosive aura soared as if a lion had awoken. His spear stabbed above him. Boom. Terrifying energy collided. Both of them were knocked back a dozen meters. Long Chen pointed his spear at Qishin. Come again. That one exchange gave everyone a fright. They finally realized a certain fact. Long Chen had definitely been hiding his true strength. During that previous attack, Qishin hadn't been holding back anything, but after receiving it, Long Chen wasn't the slightest bit injured. This scoundrel, he was actually so strong. Tang Wan'er was also shocked, her heart pounding wildly. He looked possessed by a god of war, disdainfully looking down on all. Was he the same Long Chen as she knew? Shock and fury alternated on Qishin's face, but hearing his taunt, it was immediately his fury that won over his common sense. The huge blade in his hand once more slashed at Long Chen. Wow, I tell you to come and you come. What a good dog. Brandishing his spear, his entire power exploded out. This was the first time Long Chen had used his full force since arriving here. After reaching the blood condensation realm, with each advancement he had felt his power rapidly growing. But as for what level he had exactly reached, even he didn't know. Now facing off against an opponent as strong as Qishin, his entire body's energy surged out. Boom, boom, boom. The two of them fought brutally and directly. In Qizin's anger, all he wanted was to completely crush Long Chen into mincemeat and so his attacks had no skill in them whatsoever. Long Chen was also like that. Holding the spear with both hands, he used it as a club, viciously smashing it around like some barbarian. While this battle began to intensify, the other battle slowed down. Most of the four other monsters' focus was on this side. The most shocked would have to be Lai Kai and Shang. He knew he had planted a thunder seed in Long Chen's body. Even if Long Chen had had Tang Wan'er's help, he had thought it would require at least a month's time to completely expel. And even if he expelled the thunder seed, his body would still have been ravaged by his thunder force. That would require an extremely long time to recover from. But seeing how lively Long Chen was now, 
He didn't seem injured at all. Bang. The two of them fought for a full hour like a wild tempest, not stopping at all. That was until this final collision. Both of them retreated slightly, staring back at the other. Both of them were gasping slightly. That fight had truly been too intense. How delightful. Long Chen exclaimed inside. He truly was worthy of being a monster class genius. Qi Xin's power went without saying. HMPH, you're out of strength now, aren't you? Qi Xin snorted icily, pointing his water blade at Long Chen. TCH, such a relaxing and easy fight. I could easily keep it up for three days and nights. Just this much is nothing. Long Chen disdainfully boasted. HMPH, then what are you gasping for? Qi Xin of course didn't believe him. Idiot. What gasping? This is called a breathing pattern. By quickly breathing, it's possible to increase the cultivation speed. I wouldn't expect an idiot like you to understand such a profound cultivation method. Even explaining it to you now is useless. Long Chen spouted nonsense in a retort. He had no choice but to admit inside that he was unbearably exhausted. Monster class experts were too powerful. Easily capable of killing the secular world's tendon transformation experts. Give your bullshit to someone else. Even if I decide not to kill you, I'll definitely cripple you today. Qi Xin roared and charged at Long Chen. Your dreams are grand, but unfortunately you'll never be able to achieve them. Long Chen smashed his spirit Qi Xin. Their wild fight once more resumed, but suddenly an exceptionally sweet scent drifted over. Long Chen paused. The profound spirit fruit had fully ripened. Chapter 156 Intense Struggle Translator Born to be of course, if Long Chen managed to smell it, the others also all managed to. Their auras all exploded out completely as they attempted to overpower their opponents. As for Qishin who was fighting with Long Chen, his eyes brightened and strange lines suddenly appeared between his eyebrows. As soon as those lines appeared, that water blade in his hand seemed to come to life as it slashed at Long Chen. Long Chen was startled and hastily blocked it. Boom. Now Qishin's water blade seemed to have had a mountain's worth of energy poured into it, causing Long Chen to be sent flying. Qishin smiled mockingly. Without glancing further at Long Chen, he charged towards the cave. Seeing that, Long Chen immediately understood he had been duped. And it wasn't just him. Everyone else had been fooled as well. Although he didn't know whether Qishin had been faking his anger, but he definitely hadn't lost his reasoning. He had acted as if he had gone insane to fight Long Chen. That was because Long Chen had been a bit closer to the cave. Once the profound spirit fruit matured, he could charge to it at the first moment. Long Chen reacted and charged over at Qishin. However, Qishin had moved first, and so there was no way he could catch up. Gale slashing moon. Suddenly a lovable cry rang out and a wind blade shot at Qishin. Once the profound spirit fruit had matured, everyone had been irresistibly drawn closer to the cave. Seeing Qishin was the first to charge over to the cave, Tang Wan'er gave up on her opponent and used her wind attribute energy to increase her speed, shooting over like a gust of wind. Completely avoiding all the attacks behind her, she used a secret technique to attack Qishin. Qishin on the other hand was completely horrified. That attack she had sent at him had been condensed from her full strength. If he received it without doing anything, even if didn't die, he would definitely be gravely injured. He quickly blocked with his water blade. With the wind blade and water blade collided, an explosion of energy sent Qishin flying. That terrifying energy knocked him hundreds of meters away. He had immediately gone from being the closest person to the profound spirit fruit to the furthest. That angered him so much he almost coughed up blood. Stabilizing himself, he immediately charged back, seeing if he could obtain another chance. Careful, Yes Hikyu let out a cry. That was because Tang Wan'er had left herself open to attack Qishin. Lai Kian Chang's fist had already arrived to smash into Tang Wan'er get lost you gorilla. A spear viciously smashed into Lai Kian Chang's fist. Lai Kian Chang was forced back two steps. He was furious that such a good opportunity had been lost just like that. If his attack had landed on her, the profound spirit fruit would definitely have been theirs. Die. Lai Kian Chang roared and thunder force completely covered his body. Lines of thunder force appeared on his fist as he punched at Long Chen. Long Chen hastily raised his spear to block, but a cracking sound rang out as his spear exploded. Lai Kian Chang's fist only paused for a moment before continuing towards Long Chen's stomach. Long Chen was immediately sent flying by that explosive energy, but a strange smile appeared on Long Chen's face. Lai Kian Chang's expression immediately changed. Stop him. That was because he realized his fist had sent Long Chen straight into the cave. He was both shocked and infuriated, immediately chasing. Stay behind. 
At this time Tang Wan'er had already steadied herself and her wind blades flew out, blocking him. After being knocked flying into that cave, Long Chen took out a jade case from his spatial ring and quickly ran over to the profound spirit fruit sapling, using a handkerchief to wrap the profound spirit fruit and placing it into the jade case, putting it away in his spatial ring. It truly had been a waste for Long Chen not to be a thief. From the moment he had been sent flying into the cave to plucking the fruit and storing it into his spatial ring, only half a breath had passed. Long Chen stood next to the sapling. Game's over. Do you still want to continue fighting? Lai Kian Chang and Qishin who had just ran back immediately turned green. Yu Zifeng stopped fighting, looking at Long Chen complicatedly, sheathing his sword. He walked away without saying anything. What? Are you two still not leaving? Are you waiting for me to feed you or something? Long Chen said, standing by the profound spirit fruit sapling's side. He knew that with the sapling here, this was the safest place. No matter what, those two would not dare come out to attack him for fear of harming the sapling. If they did, their lives would be taken as reimbursement, turning them into dead monsters. Lai Kian Chang and Qishin glanced at each other, both seeing the other's fury and helplessness. Now that the profound spirit fruit had landed in the other side's hands, according to the agreement, they had lost. They could only admit their own death during what had been an excellent situation had been completely destroyed by Long Chen. They hatefully glared at him, especially Lai Kian Chang. That was the second time Long Chen had ruined one of his fights. If looks could kill, Long Chen probably would have died a hundred times over. Unfortunately, they could only glare. Other than grinding their teeth, they didn't do anything. If they really did continue fighting, then this would no longer be a game, but a life and death battle. If you bet you must accept your loss. Do you want to be shameless? I silly asked Tang Wan'er. Qishin took a deep breath and pointed at Long Chen. Long Chen, I've remembered you. I'll make you regret ever being born into this world. The impishly smiling Long Chen immediately became cold, his smile disappearing to be replaced with icy killing intent. Qishin, be glad this is inside the monastery. If it was outside, I'd have made it so that you would never see tomorrow's sunrise. I'd advise you to put away your little pettiness and not invite a disaster on yourself. Long Chen was completely serious without the trace of a joke. At the same time, everyone could sense that profound killing intent from Long Chen. Tang Wan'er's heart shook. This was the same Long Chen who had killed Xiao Wu. To him, it seemed killing people was a common occurrence that was nothing out of the ordinary. Just how many people had he killed before? HMPH just keep talking big. I've already said, I'll make you regret being born in this world. Just wait. Qishin icily snorted and left. Lai Kian Chang also glared at Long Chen. Brat, don't fall into my hands later, or I'll make you live a life worse than death. Long Chen shook his head. You'll all willful children. But remember, even willfulness must have its own limit, or the price will be extremely painful. Long Chen could feel their hatred, but he didn't feel as if he had done anything wrong. The very first day they met, Qishin had ordered people to humiliate him, wanting him to kowtow in apology. That was an even more vicious humiliation than being killed. That was why he had gotten Little Snow involved to fight Qishin. And Lai Kian Chang was pretty much the same. He had ordered Xiao Wu to cripple him. Later he had been even more insidious, launching a sneak attack and planting a thunder seed inside his body, wanting him to feel the torment of having thunder force devour his body. Honestly speaking, Long Chen hadn't borne much of a grudge, feeling that within this monastery, it was more like a game. For there to be winners and losers was extremely normal. There was no need to bother about momentary wins or losses. But today, Qishin and Lai Kian Chang had shown him that they were not the same. They would do anything without holding anything back, in order to deal with him, if it was just to deal with him and they came at him openly, Long Chen would gladly receive any of their methods, but if they were too excessive and starting using some despicable methods, then they shouldn't blame him for being merciless, during the battle of the capital, for some unknown reason, Long Chen had begun to feel a kind of excitement and anticipation towards slaughter, that had caused him to feel a bit terrified, he was afraid he would become a bloodthirsty, murderous demon king, and so he had always been restraining himself since then. But today, Qishin and Lai Kian Chang's threats caused that murderous heart of his to stir slightly. Okay, don't get angry because of them. The rules are extremely strict within the monastery, and they won't dare do anything stupid. Seeing Long Chen's face was still so grave, Tang Wan'er drew him out of his stupor. She didn't know why, but she didn't like it when Long Chen was like that. She would rather see him be the rascal, laughing Long Chen. That was the Long Chen she was familiar with. 
Taking a deep breath, Long Chen suppressed his fury and put on a wronged expression. Beloved sister Wan Er, how come I feel so wounded inside? I think I overextended myself in this fight. Can you console me a bit? Let us conduct a clean and pure embrace. Ah, forget about it. Long Chen had only just spread his arms when a wind blade began to quickly revolve within Tang Wan Er's hands as she disdainfully looked at him. Her posture was such that as long as Long Chen dared come over to her, she would let him have at it. Cough. It's just a joke. Don't take it so seriously. Awkwardly laughed Long Chen. He touched his spatial ring and handed over the jade case with the profound spirit fruit. Okay. Who do I give it to? Long Chen looked at the two of them. I don't want it. You two can split it. Tang Wan Er hesitated for a moment and shook her head. Why? Yes Hikia was surprised. That was a profound spirit fruit. It was something that involved their futures and they had even fought such an intense battle for it. Why would she give it up? Originally I only fought for this profound spirit fruit in order to. Well, ah, uh, I already have a silver grade spirit root. So even without it I have a high chance to advance perfectly. You two can split it. Tang Wan Er paused halfway. Her face reddened and she glanced stealthily at Long Chen Novaloon.com then many thanks sister Wan Er. I'll remember this favor. Long Chen, let's split it in two said Ye's Hikyu. This profound spirit fruit was extremely miraculous. It didn't need to be consumed at the moment of advancement. As long as you ate it before and absorbed its essence, it would automatically strengthen your realm so that when you advanced, you would have a higher chance of a perfect advancement. Normally a silver spirit root genius would leap from having a 30% chance of a perfect advancement to a 70% chance after consuming the profound spirit fruit. But if it was split in half, the essence would be split and the chance of a perfect advancement would drop to 50%. But no matter what, even just that partial increase was an extremely great thing. That was why everyone viewed the profound spirit fruit so importantly. That was also why Lai Qianchang and Qi Xin's expressions had been so ugly when they had left. A cultivator's strength was definitely important, but luck was also an important factor. And so this partial increase in chance could allow their future to change completely. Long Chen glanced from Tang Wan Er to Ye's Hikyu and shook his head. You can eat it yourself. I can't use it. Both of them were completely shocked. They looked closely at him, asking, why is that? Long Chen was embarrassed looking at their intent gazes. He helplessly lamented, I'll tell you guys a secret, but you must keep it absolutely to yourselves. I'm actually an absolute peak genius. My Danshan spirit root is actually the legendary dark gold spirit root. Chapter 157 Your Very Dull Translator Born to be Tang Wan Er and Ye's Hikia were both completely shocked. They stared at him, but a moment later Tang Wan Er's shock faded to be replaced with complete contempt. Nonsense. Huh. How did you know? Long Chen said, stunned. Looking at Long Chen's expression, Tang Wan Er couldn't help laughing. Her released laughter was like a peach blossom blooming, extremely alluring. Tang Wan Er lightly hit him, scolding. Rascal. You're not allowed to make me laugh. If I laugh too much I'll get wrinkles. But although she said that, she was still laughing beautifully. Her voice like silver bells melodiously tinkling. Long Chen glanced from Tang Wan Er to Ye's Hikyu and came to a sudden comprehension. Ah, no wonder sister's Hikyu never laughs. Ye's Hikyu was momentarily blank before icily staring at him. You're very dull. Long Chen awkwardly laughed. He, it's a joke. Don't be so serious. Tang Wan Er was already hunched from laughing so much. Long Chen shrugged, putting on a helpless expression, his meaning being that it was she who was laughing at you, not me. Finally Tang Wan Er finished laughing, feeling that her face had even become sore from laughing so much. Gently rubbing her cheeks, she smiled at Long Chen. It really is surprising an empty-headed fool like you can be so funny. He, I have many good aspects. What, are you interested? If your heart was interested it would be best. I trust that with your aptitude and talent, as long as you work hard enough, there will eventually come a day when I will also return your feelings. But remember, you must act quickly. The current era is one of intense competition. Those who are early win, while those who are late suffer calamity. Youngsters must be filled with drive. When they see an opportunity, strike like lightning in case it goes by too fast. Long Chen solemnly said all this like a respected elder patiently teaching his descendants. A bright glow of knowledge covering his face. Ye's Hikyu looked at Long Chen strangely. It seemed the current Long Chen was a far cry from her impression of him. Hey, can you move your vulgar hand from my shoulder? Tang Wan Er glanced at him disdainfully. Aya, I was too engrossed. Cough, my bad. It was purely my hand's fault. 
Long Chen laughed and took back his hand. Anyways, Long Chen, we should still split this profound spirit fruit. This is very important to you, said Ye Zhikyu. Although Long Chen had said he didn't want it, she was sure he was just joking. Ye Zhikyu wasn't someone who didn't know her own limits. This profound spirit fruit was too rare. She couldn't take it all for herself. Long Chen, you should split it with sisters Hikyu. For me, this profound spirit fruit doesn't have much use. I was just fighting because I didn't want to let that bastard Lai Kian Chang to get it too easily. Furthermore, sisters Hikyu and I have formed an alliance. And to tell the truth, I also only put in so much effort for you. Seeing that Long Chen's expression became a bit odd, Tang Wan'er hastily continued. Hey, don't get any weird thoughts. I was fighting for a competent subordinate. Nothing more. I just wanted to raise a powerful helper. Wan'er, you're so good to me. How can I repay you? I'm absolutely penniless right now. The only thing of value I have right now is my pure and innocent body. Ah, fine. I'll give it to you. Long Chen sputtered out while he was choked with emotion. Scoundrel, are you asking for death? Tang Wan'er gave him a vicious pinch. Ah yes, pinch me as much as you like. In any case, I've already given myself to you. To become one of Sister Wan'er's family, even when I die. I will be Sister Wan'er's family Long Chen's physical body was powerful while Tang Wan'er didn't specialize in strength in that way. Her pinches didn't really hurt him at all. PFFT. Both Long Chen and Tang Wan'er stiffened for a moment. That was because that sound hadn't been from either one of them. They both quickly turned to stare at Ye's Hikyu. They saw her covering her face and turning away. Ye's Hikyu also knew how to laugh. Both Long Chen and Tang Wan'er stopped whatever they were doing to stare at her. But when Ye's Hiki once more turned back, her face had once more become ice. Shaking her head, she said, You two are both dull. I'll split the profound spirit fruit now. She opened the jade case and took out a dagger, about to cut it. You must not. Long Chen was startled. No longer smiling mischievously, he extended his hand to stop her. The profound spirit fruit is a natural treasure. It rejects metal. And so if you touch it with that dagger, this profound spirit fruit's energy will drop by more than half explained Long Chen seriously. Both of them were surprised. Their families both had extremely great backers and backgrounds. They knew the Zhuanshan Monastery's trial region would contain a single profound spirit fruit that would mature during the trial. That was a huge opportunity for them. All five monster class experts had long since been told that the profound spirit fruit was their greatest opportunity here Novaloon.com but all they knew about it was that it had an extremely high probability to allow blood condensation experts perfectly advanced to the tendon transformation realm. As for its taboos and its efficiency, they were completely unclear. And so Ye's Hikyu had almost committed an extremely grave error. Seeing how serious Long Chen was, Ye's Hikyu was given a fright. She had almost ruined a profound spirit fruit. She hastily put away the dagger. Then how should we do it? Asked Ye's Hikyu. Long Chen replied. I wasn't kidding. My body is somewhat special and I don't need the profound spirit fruit. Even if I ate it, it would be a complete waste. So, sisters Hikyu, you can have this entire profound spirit fruit. Seeing how serious he was now, Ye's Hikyu and Tang Wan'er both glanced at each other. Tang Wan'er laughed. Sometimes this fellow's words can be trusted. Sister, please accept it. Ye's Hikyu nodded, putting the profound spirit fruit into her ring. She gratefully thanked. Then I'll thank both of you. Zhikyu will remember this kindness. Okay, now that we've finished dividing the spoils, let's go find a place to eat some fish. Tang Wan'er pulled on Ye's Hikyu. Long Chen shook his head and rolled his eyes. You guys can go, but I'm not coming. If you don't come then how will we have fish to eat? Raged Tang Wan'er. Is there a mistake here? Why must you eat my fish? Aren't you the one inviting others to eat? Long Chen was naturally a bit indignant. You're my underling. So what's yours is mine. Are you planning on rebelling? Tang Wan'er said, acting as if that was as it should be. Comma two hours later, at the end of a mountain valley with a clear pool beside it, the fragrance of fish wafted out. Long Chen, you really are capable. You even managed to get wonder carps and queen bee honey. Yes Hikyu let out an extremely rare bit of praise. But naturally what Long Chen had brought out was just the ordinary honey with a bit of the queen bee honey added into it to improve the flavor. If he really did just drink the queen bee honey directly just for the taste, he would definitely feel that to be a waste. As Long Chen cooked more fish, he gave Ye's Hikyu a thumbs up and exclaimed, Sisters Hikyu truly is someone who understands reason. You're not like some people who eat and drink other people's food without saying a single word. 
Long Chen glanced at Tang Wan'er as he said that. Tang Wan'er was completely infatuated with the fish and jade butterfly honey. But her mood was just too good at this moment and she pretended as if she hadn't heard Long Chen's words. She knew he was intentionally needling her. If she became angry, that would just be falling for his wicked plans. Long Chen, I can understand why Lai Kian Chang hates you. But I'm curious, why did Qishin become like a crazy dog as soon as he saw you? Tang Wan'er asked somewhat puzzled. Ah, do you even need to ask? Of course it's because he's jealous of how handsome I am. Long Chen mumbled out with a mouth full of fish. I'm talking properly to you. Why are you like this? Tang Wan'er raged. Don't blame me. Normally I'm so proper. But whenever I see you I lose control. I guess I'm just someone who is easy to infect and contaminate. Helplessly said Long Chen. Scoundrel. You're to the one who's not normal. Not me. How could Tang Wan'er not understand his roundabout insult? She threw her fish bones at him. Long Chen laughed and dodged. Seeing that she had started to truly become angry, he knew he couldn't take it too far and hastily poured another cup of honey for both of them. The queen bee honey you're drinking now was something I obtained with his help. Long Chen told them about how he had worked together with Qishin at the beehive. In any case, Long Chen didn't feel that this was something that needed to be hidden. When Long Chen finished his story, Ye's Hikyu sighed and shook her head. Qishin really is unlucky to have provoked you. Tang Wan'er on the other hand had already lost any sense of decorum and was laying on Ye's Hikyu's shoulder, holding her stomach as she tried to breathe through her laughter. Long Chen, you really are too, wicked. Tang Wan'er gasped for breath, her face red with another kind of beauty. Only now did Tang Wan'er and Ye's Hikyu understand why Qishin had immediately gone so crazy, even if it had been a bit purposeful at the end, but at the beginning when he had been trembling from rage, that was definitely not fate. Hearing Long Chen's explanation, they now completely understood. Looking at her laughing, Long Chen couldn't stop himself from evilly saying, Sister Wan'er, if you can say that again, but a bit more coyly, I would be able to accept it easier. Wicked Long Chen, you can't even talk properly for more than a minute before returning to your nonsense. I won't bother with you anymore. Tang Wan'er turned her head, purposely not looking at him. Ye's Hikyu suddenly gave him a warning. Long Chen, although you are powerful, your cultivation base is only at the mid-stage of blood condensation. You should be a bit more careful. Although we've caused Lai Kianchang and Qishin to suffer a loss this time, that doesn't mean they're weak. It's just that we all have some apprehensions and don't dare use our entire strength. Don't get overconfident. Ye's Hikyu might be an icy person, but she was more reliable than Tang Wan'er. She had given him a warning when seeing him smiling and laughing carelessly all day. Long Chen paused. You mean none of you have used your full strength? Yes. Although the profound spirit fruit was important, the core disciple trial is even more important. No one wants to be injured before that time arrives. In just 10 more days, that final trial will begin. Whether we can obtain a core disciple position will depend on it, explained Tang Wan'er. Long Chen nodded. No wonder he had felt as if something was wrong. Even he had suspected that a monster class expert's strength would not have been limited to that level. So originally they were all focused on the final trial. That made sense. Long Chen suddenly asked Tang Wan'er, Can you summon a wind blade and give me a good look? Chapter 158 Inherited Rune Translator Born to be no. Do you think I'll summon one just because you ask me to? Tang Wan'er finally found an opportunity to retaliate and simply rolled her eyes at Long Chen, giving him the back of her head. No way. You eat and drink my food and all I want is for you to show off a bit. But you refuse? You really flip faster than the pages of a book. Long Chen opened his eyes wide. Tang Wan'er realized what he said was reasonable. She sighed awkwardly. Fine. What do you want to see? His first reaction was to say you'll show me whatever I ask. But he quickly brushed off that idea as it was not worth it. After he said that he would probably not only be beaten, but this rare opportunity would also have been wasted. Just summon out a normal wind blade. I just want to take a look. Long Chen was extremely curious about her wind blades. Tang Wan'er's wind blades were different from Little Snow's. She could split them, combine them, use them for defense, and all kinds of other marvelous methods. Extending her hand, a wind blade formed above her palm, quickly revolving. Long Chen was about to ask her to keep the wind blade still when he realized what a stupid question that was. Water was constantly changing, but wind was never stable. It was impossible for her to cause the wind to stop or the wind would disappear. Luckily he had stopped himself before he had lost face. 
The current wind blade in her hand was just an ordinary wind blade and hadn't been turned into a weapon. Wanner's wind spirit body truly is amazing. You can summon wind blades with just a thought. Praised Yez Hikyu. If Yez Hikyu wanted to summon an ice blade, it would require her to first circulate her spiritual key in preparation. There was no way she could do it as randomly and easily as Tang Wanner. Long Chen closely examined the wind blade. He could sense that within the wind blade was a trace of spiritual strength. With just an urge from her soul, it could be sent out to attack others. Are you trying to secretly learn my wind blades? Tang Wanner asked when she saw how deep in thought Long Chen was. You're joking. Yes Hikyu looked at Long Chen with surprise. This fellow is really nefarious. He even managed to steal Lai Kian Chang's thunder force. There's nothing he doesn't dare try to do. Laughed Tang Wanner Long Chen rolled his eyes. Can I take those words as praise? He, if you think so then okay. Tang Wanner laughed. Yes Hikyu was shocked. It seemed Tang Wanner had been telling the truth. Can you change its shape? Asked Long Chen. Tang Wanner nodded. The wind blade quickly changed. Become a long sword in her hand. But even once it had changed shape and its outside was now no longer moving. Long Chen could still sense the wind blade strength within was still quickly circulating even faster than before. This wind blade sword in Tang Wanner's hand was causing space to twist slightly. The pressure coming from it was much greater. Long Chen nodded. This was a kind of technical method was something that he could definitely learn. Although he had no wind energy, his flame energy could also copy that. Although he had a pill god's memories, those memories were not complete. He had some techniques to refine medicinal pills as well as knowledge of medicinal ingredients and other things relating to alchemy. Everything else was completely gone. So if Long Chen wanted to learn to control his flame, that would require him to grope around on his own. He hoped to maybe learn a bit from Tang Wanner's control over her wind blades. Last time I saw that there were some lines within your wind blades. What are those? Asked Long Chen. That's my family's ancestral rune. Only my family's main bloodline's disciples can use that kind of technique. As Tang Wanner spoke, her wind blade gradually grew larger, becoming three meters long. That terrifying aura cut apart space, causing space to constantly tremble. At the same time, violent wind surged from it continuously making people feel as if blades were scraping across their face. Then the wind blade in her hand disappeared and everything returned to calm. She explained, using such a wind blade uses up my body's core energy, so I can't maintain it for too long. Otherwise it will affect my combat strength during the core disciple trial. Core energy was extremely powerful, but it would only recover slowly. So Tang Wanner could only show such a wind blade to Long Chen for a moment. Long Chen nodded and became lost in thought. With Tang Wanner's display this time, he had completely seen through the intricacies of her wind blades. But all those intricacies were nothing compared to that final part. Those faint lines that had appeared within the wind blade had caused the wind blade's strength to explode by ten times. That was what was most terrifying. Back when he had fought against Qishin, Qishin had also used such a method to send Long Chen flying. That kind of force was practically unstoppable. He raised his hand and a flame appeared over his hand. Surprising both Tang Wanner and Ye's Hikyu, they looked closely at Long Chen, wanting to see what he was planning. After appearing, that flame slowly began to be compressed into a crescent moon shape, the same shape as Tang Wanner's wind blades, but within Long Chen's hand, it was unable to revolve. Long Chen shook his head. That flame blade immediately turned to become a fist sized ball. That flame ball quickly grew larger, becoming a meter in diameter. Terrifying heat waves constantly roasted the air. This large flame ball then began to quickly circulate within Long Chen's hand, the terrifying energy within it simply bouncing around. What powerful spiritual strength. Tang Wanner was shocked. She hadn't thought Long Chen's spiritual strength was so great that it was like a boundless ocean. If it hadn't been powerful enough, compressing his flame into such a ball would have definitely caused an explosion. The ball of flame then faded away. Long Chen dejectedly shook his head. He wanted to see if he could condense runes like Tang Wanner but he had failed. Although he had copied her circulation method, he was unable to condense those lines. Long Chen, there's nothing you can do about this. First of all, your flame's level isn't high. Second of all, that isn't your core flame. It is impossible for it to condense a rune. That rune is deeply imprinted into my bloodline. Even if outsiders copy the technique, it's completely useless. It's as if you copied how to cook a recipe but then realized you didn't even have a pan to cook with. It's futile consoled Tang Wanner. She had seen through Long Chen's thinking. He had wanted to copy her technique and imitate it with his flame. 
but Long Chen wasn't the same as her. She had immediately seen that his flame was a beast flame and not his original flame, so to summon a rune was impossible. Her family's inheritance stretched back countless years. Powerful experts had come from her ancestors who had somehow added in wind energy into their bloodline. That was how her bloodline inheritance came to possess such power. I'll although I'm still a bit unconvinced. You're completely correct. Ah, this is just my fate. Long Chen smiled bitterly. For an idea to be crushed just like that really was irritating. Furthermore, he cultivated in the nine-star hegemon body art. The most powerful part of him was his physical body. There was no way he could put his focus on becoming a pill cultivator. And so he could only drop this subject. Don't get dejected. There are many techniques within the monastery. As long as you work hard, you'll definitely be able to find a way to control your flame better. Consoled Tang Wan'er. Thank you Sister Wan'er for your consolation. But if you give me a hug, I'm sure the wound on my heart will completely disappear. Long Chen said expectantly. Ugh. Scram. Tang Wan'er immediately scolded Long Chen. She even scolded herself for being stupid enough to worry about a shameless fool like Long Chen. Long Chen laughed. Teasing a beauty alleviated a great deal of his dejection. Although it was impossible for him to condense a rune. By following Tang Wan'er's controlling method, he could still increase his pill flame's power by a bit. That was at least something. Furthermore, Long Chen wasn't really discouraged. His current beast flame was from a flame leopard. That was just a second rank magical beast and wasn't that powerful. Once he refined the flame salamanders needon, his beast flame would be completely upgraded. At that time, if he tried again, it wasn't certain that he would still fail. Collecting his thoughts, he asked them why they had suddenly formed an alliance. Tang Wan'er told Long Chen that once they entered the monastery, the resources they would offer them were limited. If they wanted to obtain more resources, that would require them to win struggles against others. This struggle relied on power. In accordance to the monastery's rules, the monastery would not care how you struggled for your resources. So once you entered the monastery, the struggle and competition became exceptionally intense. Cultivation was a cruel world. If you didn't step over others, you would end up stepped on by others. That was a reality that was unavoidable. Tang Wan'er had been the first to arrive at the profound spirit fruit. But at that time it hadn't ripened yet and so she could only wait. The second to arrive had been Lai Kai and Shang. The two of them had directly begun to fight. With Lai Kai and Shang's temperament, having suffered a previous loss to her, he had wanted to get revenge. At the same time, he had wanted to prove his strength to Tang Wan'er. As they had fought, everyone else had gathered. Tang Wan'er had been the one to propose an alliance with Ye's Hikyu. Their alliance would be one in which they would help each other attack and defend during battles. And Ye's Hikyu had assented. After all, the competition would only become more intense in the future. As an icy person, it was difficult for Ye's Hikyu to get close to others. She was only slightly closer to Tang Wan'er. Naturally she wouldn't refuse. That was how the two of them had joined hands against the other three. At that time, Yu Zifeng had been the last to arrive. By the time he had, Lai Kianchang and Qishin had already begun working hand in hand. As for Tang Wan'er and Ye's Hikyu, they didn't really want to form an alliance with Yu Zifeng. Thus, Yu Zifeng was pulled into Lai Kianchang's group. But Tang Wan'er also said that Yu Zifeng was an extremely proud person. Although he had temporarily joined their group, he hadn't used his full strength when fighting. Otherwise they would have found it extremely difficult to endure. Long Chen recalled how Yu Zifeng had left completely calmly and freely. That truly was the manner of an expert. That was a great difference from Lai Kianchang and Qishin. Only those with broader hearts who could accept both wins and losses could walk further on the martial path. Tang Wan'er and Ye's Hikyu solemnly warned him that he had to be careful of Lai Kianchang and Qishin. The both of them were already completely filled with hate towards Long Chen. Although they probably wouldn't dare to kill him, if they had the chance, they would definitely heavily injure him, maybe even crippling him. That was because the monastery's rules were not completely perfect and there were still loopholes. Otherwise Long Chen also wouldn't have been able to get away with killing Zhao Wu as if nothing had happened. The monastery's rules were mostly favorable for the stronger party. Losers would only be able to go off and cry by themselves about their own lack of power. That was the cruelty within the monastery. After they had pretty much eaten their fill, Tang Wan'er said, let's go to the final trial location. Since there's not that much time left, let's just stay together. Long Chen naturally wouldn't refuse such an alluring proposal. With two beauties beside him, who knew just how many people would die of envy along their journey. 
Chapter 159 sent flying with a single kick translator, born to be as he had expected. On their way, Long Chen became the complete focus. But of course, when others looked at Long Chen, their gazes were not filled with the same loving and worshipful expressions they had when they looked at Ye's Hikyu and Tang Wanur. Instead, those gazes were filled with both hatred and jealousy. Who is that guy? How is he walking with the two beauties? Did you see that look in his eyes? That's definitely a provocation. No, it's unbearable. I definitely have to have a fight with him. I'll definitely beat him up. One dark-faced man angrily raged, obviously unable to control his own jealousy. We'll support you, but before you go, leave behind your spatial ring as well as anything valuable. You might also want to leave behind a final will and some parting words, lightly said one tall, slender man beside him. What do you mean? Asked the dark-faced man. I mean if you go, don't think about returning alive. That's the person who burned Xiao Wu alive. Do you think you're stronger than Xiao Wu? So you mean, he's Long Chen. Do you need me to say it? Other than him, who else could walk that closely with Tang Wan or? Hey, since you said you were going to fight him, hurry up. Your brothers are all waiting for you to beat him up. Mocked another person by his side. That dark-faced man immediately awkwardly blushed. But since his face was so dark, no one could tell. Cough. How could I not recognize Long Chen? I was just making a joke for everyone. Haha. <laughs> Look. I can't believe you guys believed me. Laughed the dark-faced man. Boring. Cocky. Disdainful. Everyone around him mocked him. That person gloomily walked to the back. Not wanting to be ridiculed. He naturally didn't dare to go and fight with Long Chen anymore. As Long Chen's group of three continued forward, Long Chen noticed that more and more people were gathering here. After he counted, he saw that there were actually over 10,000 people. No need to wonder about it. Not all of these people have gathered all the tiles. Since they came from so far, they probably want to see what the final trial is like. Tang Wanner explained when she saw Long Chen's confusion. Although the trial region was extremely large with countless opportunities, after this much time had passed, everyone had basically already collected whatever they could. Some opportunities had powerful magical beasts guarding them. If they didn't handle that properly, it would be easy for them to lose their life. No one wanted to risk that danger, and so they just followed the flow of the crowd Novaloon.com even if they hadn't passed this trial. Getting to see more of the world was also good. Once they returned home, they would still have something to talk about. This final trial location was on the edge of the trial region, and there were no more good opportunities to be obtained here. They could only continue forward sullenly. As they continued forward, there were also some people who began to join Long Chen's group. Those people were naturally from Tang Wan'er and Ye's Hikyu's factions. Long Chen had once quietly asked Tang Wan'er just what was so good about becoming a core disciple. She had told him that after becoming a core disciple, not only would she be able to make her own faction, each month she would receive a fixed ration of cultivation resources. Furthermore, it was possible to obtain even more cultivation resources by completing the sect's missions. Each month, the sect would test their powers, and the stronger factions would have first choice of missions. All those rewards would all be given to only her. In other words, Tang Wan'er had complete authority of how to divide those rewards. What made Long Chen extremely worried was that he had frequently been beaten by Tang Wan'er. Would this boss of his make life hard for him? Tang Wan'er hadn't replied when he had asked that, only laughing at him. She had winked at him, meaning he should understand from his own experience. Following her explanation, Long Chen finally understood how important a faction's power was. The sect only gave out a certain amount of missions. If they wanted to enjoy more cultivation resources, they would need to rely on those missions. But with limited missions, they would need to struggle just for those missions. Without a powerful faction to rely on, you really could only starve to death. Boss, suddenly a startled cry from the side. Turning his head, Long Chen saw that it was Guo Ran. Not bad, I really didn't need to worry about you. Long Chen was much more at ease seeing Guo Ran. Greetings Sister Wan'er. Greetings Sisters Hikyu. Guo Ran noticed a bit late who was beside him. He hastily greeted the two beauties respectfully. Yes Hikyu only lightly nodded. Tang Wan'er glanced at Long Chen and then told Guo Ran. You're definitely much better than your boss. Pay attention not to learn bad things from him in the future. Yes, yes, yes. Junior brother will remember Sister Wan'er's priceless words. Please be at easy sister. This junior brother will not be infected pow. Guo Ran had still been going on when Long Chen hit him on the head and scolded. Whose side are you on? 
Tang Wan'er laughed and said to Long Chen, You guys can catch up. I'm going to look ahead and collect everyone. She waved goodbye to Long Chen and quickly brought away Ye's Hikyu. The final trial was about to begin. Everyone in their factions needed to be gathered. Seeing the two of them had left, Guo Ran gave Long Chen a thumbs up. Boss, I really admire you. In all the information gathered, you are the only one who has ever killed someone. Furthermore, you even managed to continue the trial. Boss, you are definitely the number one person here. Ah, don't blindly mess around. Did you collect all the tiles? Asked Long Chen. He, easily, right in front of Long Chen. Guo Ran took off his boot and used a knife to cut open the sole, revealing two tiles in front of Long Chen's dumbfounded expression. He then cut open the other shoe, forming a perfect set. Guo Ran proudly said, I got one in a fight and bought the other two. He, once I gathered them I placed them in here. I met many people who wanted to rob me, but not one noticed where I put them. Look boss, I definitely paid a worthy price for this set. Yeah, okay, please put them away. I don't want to get your foot fungus. Long Chen hastily took a couple steps back. Perhaps this kind of method was something only someone like Guo Ran could have done. But no matter what, Guo Ran had relied on his own strength to collect a full set, which he admired. That was because his set had just been given to him by Tang Wan Er. Let's go. Put your tablet together. With me here. No one would dare steal your things. Laughed Long Chen. Guo Ran put together the tiles. Because it couldn't be put in a spatial ring. He stuffed it in his robes. Boss, I heard you were struck by Lai Kian Chang's thunderseed. Are you alright? I'm fine. Guo Ran was about to say more when someone walked over. Looking over Long Chen, he icily said, You are Long Chen. Long Chen frowned slightly. This person held his head high, looking down on him. It was quite irritating. Do you need something? I heard you're very skilled. Rumored to be the number one person below the monster class. I want to test that out to see if you really are worthy of that reputation. That person struck his chest icily. Ah, just fuck off then. I, Long Chen, am not someone just anyone has the qualification to appraise. Long Chen disdained this kind of provocation the most. Couldn't you just conserve your energy for the final trial? Do you need to waste my time? Long Chen didn't even stop walking as he spoke. Not even placing this person in his eyes despite the fact he was quite strong. That Peron narrowed his eyes and pointed at Long Chen. I don't have the qualifications? Receive one of my punches before boasting so shamelessly. That person shouted and his aura suddenly exploded. Shaking the air. That immediately drew everyone's attention. What a powerful aura. That person's aura rose extremely quickly. Reaching its peak in just a couple breaths. Take this. Light exploded from his fist as he smashed it at Long Chen. Boss. Careful. He's hastily shouted Guo Ran. Boom. An explosion rang out before Guo Ran could say his name. People could feel the earth shaking. One of them was sent flying into the air like a cannonball, reaching a height of hundreds of meters before slowing down, then quickly speeding up before crashing into the ground. The earth once more shook. A crater had been smashed into the ground by him, and at the center, that person was like a green onion, half his body planted in the ground, leaving only his two legs above ground. Guo Ran was stunned. He knew that person to be an expert. He was defeated with just a single kick? Practically no one had seen Long Chen preparing to move. By the time they did, he had already kicked that person flying. Then without even blinking, Long Chen immediately continued on his way. That manner was as if he had just randomly kicked away a stone on his path. As expected, there really were all sorts of people here. This person had clearly been spoiled rotten by his family. In a true battle, who else would have no guard against an attack? Did your opponent really need to just obediently take your fist? If this had been a life and death battle, that was completely asking for death. He finally understood why there were those magical beasts in this trial region. That was to let these flowers that had grown up protected within a greenhouse to see true blood. Otherwise these useless fellows would be useless forever. Despite their strength, a powerful sect required elites. They definitely wouldn't waste energy on raising idiots. No wonder this trial had immediately caused 75% of them to wash out at least. There were far too many idiots here. Even if they were talented, they were just talented idiots. They weren't useful. By the time Guo Ran reacted, Long Chen had already walked quite a bit away. He hastily ran over, filled with excitement. Being with this kind of boss, he would definitely be able to eat and drink as he pleased. He had definitely made the right decision back then. He was admiring his own eyesight more and more. After another 50 miles, 
Guo Ran and Long Chen finally arrived at the end. There was a huge mountain. But what was stunning about this 3,000 meter mountain was that it looked as if part of it had been cut off by a person. That cut off part revealed the stone inside the mountain. That stone was black as ink. Along that side of the mountain were many caves, numbering in at least the thousands. They almost seemed like demonic eyes. A strange aura came from them, causing people to tremble. When Long Chen arrived, he saw that five groups had already formed neatly at the front. Those were the five monsters factions. Come over Long Chen. Chapter 160 Long Chen's Grand Dream Translator Born to be Long Chen saw Tang Wan Er beckoning to him cordially from the crowd. That made him pause for a moment. It didn't seem as if Tang Wan Er had even been that nice to him before. But then he saw that King Yu was beside her and he immediately understood. Even though he didn't want to, he still braced himself for it as he walked over. Sister King Yu, hello. Long Chen had no choice but to smile nicely to King Yu. Tang Wan Er had already told him that the person she was most afraid of would have to be this sister King Yu of hers. Although King Yu was her maid, she didn't treat her that way. Instead, she considered her as her own little sister. But King Yu's sole fault was that she always wanted to nag, to the point of driving people crazy. So Tang Wan Er both loved and feared her. King Yu had been chatting with Tang Wan Er when Long Chen had arrived. Long Chen had looked so adorable and handsome that she had called him over. Long Chen. I heard you fought with someone else. Are you alright? King Yu asked somewhat annoyed. She gently removed a piece of stray grass from his hair. His first reaction was that he wasn't used to someone being that intimate with him and he wanted to take a step back. But seeing that there wasn't even the slightest impurity within King Yu's eyes, he suddenly felt much closer to her. Those eyes were just like a clear pool of water. After taking out that stray strand, she then tidied up his collar. Although Wanner told me you are powerful. We came to the monastery to cultivate. If you don't run into anything too excessive, it'd be better to just endure it. After all, it's not good to be too vicious and, he didn't know why, but King Yu's gentle actions caused him to think of his mother. When he was little, she would also use these gentle movements to tidy him up. He still remembered at that time his mother was still very young and extremely beautiful, just like King Yu. But as he grew up, his mother grew older, thinking of the past. His heart soured slightly and he felt he was about to tear up. At the same time he could also sense that King Yu's heart was extremely kind and caring. It was no wonder someone with Tang Wan Er's temperament would still put up with her. That kind of feeling was something impossible to give up. Tang Wan Er finally let out a breath of relief. At least she was no longer the only target of King Yu's scolding. But looking at Long Chen's eyes which had reddened slightly, she was startled. As for Guo Ran. When he saw Long Chen who had gone from a mighty expert who had sent someone flying with a single kick to being almost an obedient little child listening to a woman's instructions, he laughed. Although Long Chen's heart was moved, being continuously scolded by someone really wasn't fun. Seeing Guo Ran laughing into his sleeve, he had a sudden inspiration. Guo Ran, get over here. What do you need boss? Guo Ran hastily put away his smile. Long Chen said to King Yu, Sister King Yu. I feel like what you said makes a lot of sense. Each of your words are pearls of wisdom that give me food for thought. But my memory isn't very good. Let me introduce you. This is my brother Guo Ran. He is someone famous for his amazing memory. He'll never forget anything he hears. So, please tell all your gems of wisdom for me to him. He'll organize it all and record it in a book for me. That way, even if sister isn't by my side, I can study the wisdom sister has left for me. Guo Ran turned wooden as he listened. But as for King Yu, her eyes brightened. I really hadn't imagined you were so clever Long Chen. This is an excellent idea. You're Guo Ran, right? Okay, then good. You must remember what I'm about to say word for word. It might be a bit long. So if you can't remember it all, just say something and I'll repeat it for you. Okay, so let's start from how it's not good to be too vicious and. King Yu pulled Guo Ran to the side and began to lecture him. Long Chen acted as if he didn't see Guo Ran's resentful gaze. Who asked that fellow to laugh at his misery? Brothers should work through blessings and disasters together. Rascal, when did you get so smart? Tang Wan Er walked up to Long Chen, showing delight and surprise in her beautiful eyes. In the future, I can use this method whenever Sister King Yu wants to educate me. It really is excellent. Seeing Tang Wan Er was still staring at him, he said, Hey, don't get any ideas about hitting me. TCH, do you think you're worth me thinking about? Disdainfully said Tang Wan Er. That relieved Long Chen quite a bit. Getting serious, he asked, has everyone gathered? T 
Tang Wang'er's expression became slightly gloomy. They've all mostly gathered, but some people died out of my expectations during the trial. How? asked Long Chen. Within my faction were two extremely talented registrants, but when they were crossing the river, there was an accident and they ended up drowning. Tang Wan'er clenched her teeth angrily. Long Chen immediately understood that that was probably no accident, but on purpose. Who did it? Someone gave me a report that it was Kizin's people. At that time they were traveling in the same raft. The majority of the people on that raft had been his people. The raft broke apart out of nowhere, and in the panic, several people fell into the water, including the two from my faction, said Tang Wan'er. Isn't that maliciously killing people? Did the monastery not care? Long Chen frowned. That was obviously a plot. It's useless. There were a total of seven people who fell into the water, and one of them was Qi Xin's underling. Even if they know it's on purpose, there's no proof. Since one of Qi Xin's people also died, they can just say it was an accident. Even the monastery can't do anything. Helplessly sighed Tang Wan'er. She continued. Those two people were exceptionally powerful. Even a bit stronger than that Xiao Wu you killed. I hadn't expected them to be so vicious. Tang Wan'er's eyes reddened. She was clearly unable to accept such a thing. Perhaps in Tang Wan'er's eyes, this had all just been a game. But for two people to die in this game caused her to be extremely uncomfortable. You have to learn how to accept how cruel reality is. This competition within the monastery doesn't count as anything. If you lived in the secular word, you would understand what is true cruelty. When your family dies right in front of you, that kind of helplessness, that kind of bitterness, that kind of torment, that is what is called cruel. To you disciples who lived comfortably and privileged in your powerful homes, that's something you can't even imagine. So you should learn to slowly accept this reality. That is because in the future, it will only become even crueler. The only exception is if you stop cultivating, said Long Chen. Having experienced the treachery and evil in other people's hearts as well as many life and death battles, Long Chen had long since seen through the fundamental nature of cultivation. Reality was cruel. If you wanted to live with dignity, you need an accordingly high strength. Otherwise, whether you were a peasant pawn or a ruler of a kingdom, your status meant nothing. Normally as a son of a noble house, Long Chen should have been viewed as a high and mighty existence to commoners. At the very least he should have had enough to eat and get by. But what had happened in reality? Wasn't he being oppressed into completely desperate straits? If it weren't for those sudden pill god memories with the nine-star hegemon body art, the Long family would already have been exterminated to the last man as they were used as part of someone's nefarious scheme. Then there was Chu Yao. She had been born with the status of an empire's princess, but she had been plotted against, foreordained to have a miserable fate. Without Long Chen, she probably would have already killed herself. So, in Long Chen's opinion, in order to live properly, you needed a powerful strength. Otherwise, you could choose to live a miserable life surviving off scraps or you could choose to release yourself in death. There was not another option. I feel like I harmed them. If I hadn't pulled them into my faction, life and death are ordained by the heavens. You didn't harm them. The only thing that can be said is that they were unlucky. Cultivation is a path of no retreat. Once you step onto this path, there's no chance for you to look back. If your Dao heart ends up wavering, you will also follow along behind them not long from now. Long Chen solemnly warned Tang Wan'er. If she ended up lost on her cultivation path because two of her capable subordinates had died, that would definitely be not worth it. So Long Chen gave her a warning. Tang Wan'er shook. Long Chen's words were like an alarm, awakening her with a start. Thank you Long Chen. I was just chasing my own tail. Tang Wan'er gratefully thanked him. As a monster class expert and the number one genius of her family, her family's experts had long since repeatedly warned her that she must maintain a bright day of heart. Unconsciously. Her Dao heart had already begun to waver now. If it weren't for Long Chen's reminder, that kind of hidden danger might really end up blowing up. Although it might not have necessarily formed a heart devil, it would definitely have affected her future cultivation. Long Chen smiled slightly. He winked. What are you so courteous for? Just remember it all. You understand. Long Chen had actually been about to repeat what he had said about her giving him her heart. But there were too many people around. Although they were extremely quiet. It wouldn't be good for others to overhear that. Tang Wan'er's shame immediately flew away. Scoundrel, do you want to die? Long Chen laughed. Only this side of you is a bit more normal. Tang Wan'er found that both irritating and funny. She was also a bit moved. Long Chen had wanted to divert her thoughts, and he had succeeded. 
The moment she had become indignant, she had woken from her stupor. Sometimes I really can't understand just what is in that head of yours. Somehow you seem to understand many things. Curiously said Tang Wanur. Not seem to. I really do understand many things. I understand the heavens. I understand the earth. And I understand everything in between. Long Chen shook his head. Deadly serious. Seeing Long Chen like this, she didn't know whether he was purposely acting eccentric or not. She laughed. But seeing how many people glancing over in surprise, she quickly stopped. She rebuked. Your skin really is thick. Right. Long Chen. Do you have any dreams for your future? Of course I have a dream. After all, what if I manage to achieve it one day? Seriously said Long Chen. Then what is your dream? Curiously asked Tang Wanur. My dream is, he, I feel like it's a bit embarrassing to say. He bashfully said, TCH, with your thick skin, is there anything that is embarrassing to you? Quickly tell me. Tang Wanur was filled with anticipation. Then I'll tell you. Don't get too shocked. My dream is to become one, big, scoundrel.